Royce, what up? Legend, legend, legend. Oh, nah, my brother. My brother, respect. Can, What's I, up, can I bring my opinion in here real quick? Of I, course. I, first of all, I love what y'all doing because y'all making people concentrate on lyrics again, right? Mm -hmm. And not like lyrics ever left, but just the conversation. I love it. But let me let me give a real, like, uh, even sort of critique of what people saying, right? And I'm going to mm -hmm. be real quick. It ain't nobody out there that can fuck with you in terms of writing songs, in terms of the lyrics that you put together, in terms of the vowel usage, in terms of the rhyming schemes. What I do find, though, is that when your rhyming schemes and your quintuplets and all that, like when we got four things that rhyme, they make sense. A lot of dudes be out here just, that's their whole purpose, is just to make four things rhyme and what they saying don't make sense. So that that part of it loses me. So mm. when they step in the ring with somebody like you and say you, I'm like, yeah, you could show me where you rhyming these four things, but what are you really saying? You ain't saying nothing. Mm. And I think what the battle rappers is saying is that the MCs that write songs have not stood on that stage and understand what it's like to command that specific crowd, not a crowd. That crowd is different from when you're doing a show. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, I paid $10 or $20 to come see you and you one of my favorite artists and I'm going to sing the songs and all of that, it's different. To stand mm -hmm. on that battle stage and command that audience is something I think the older MCs don't really understand what it feels like to be in that audience. That's mm -hmm. the, the real conversation right there is it's mm -hmm. a different sport. It's like, it's like an NBA dude stepping on the court with and one dudes where you're going to be like, yo, like, okay, this dude's skill is what it is, but he ain't played on this court. That's why every NBA dude had to go to the Rucker at a certain point to get a name. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, okay, this is, we understand that this is, you you in that league where there's reps and there's calls and all that, but it's different when you step on the Rucker. It's different. You need a name. Mm -hmm. So that's the part. But my, my whole thing that I try to preach, bro, as many of these MCs that I hear, they concentration be so much on rhyme patterns and the skill. And I'll be like, yo, what are you actually saying? So it's like, it's people like you that when I'm arguing for you and being like, yo, but Duke is actually getting better as he gets older. Book Ryan is something I didn't know I was going to get at this point. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. those, those things are points that people be missing. I'm like, yo, what, what are you saying? At the end of the day, it's it's a thing of, of gymnastics, but what are you actually saying that's ill that make me go, oh my god? It can't just be the it rhymes. That 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 part of it is it loses me. I went through a long phase of that, man. Long phase of that, probably like ten years. Plus, I was drunk too, like I ain't even realize it, and I didn't realize how quick the novelty wears mm -hmm. off that you can rap, you can snap words together. Right. You know what I'm saying? I right. think Joe was the first person that told me because he's so blunt. You know what I'm saying? He was just right. like, yo, man, like your flow is ridiculous, but you don't never talk about nothing. He was like, yo, all you rap about is your gun and your dick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to talk about something. And it was like, right. that's when that's one of the moments where I knew that creatively we could set traps for ourselves and not even know it. You know what I mean? Like we get into this like complacency space where it's just like, we could be stuck doing the same thing for like long periods of time if we don't like police ourselves. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying Royce, I, I, I enjoy the creativity of it. Don't get me wrong. But I also need some, even if you're telling a story that didn't exist, I don't think um, Arizona Ron from Tucson had the black Yukon, usually had the slow grooves on, mostly rock the eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't think that actually happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the way Big put it together, it's like, it's a great Tarantino-ish story mm -hmm. so i i'm not even one of the ones that's like yo everything you say gotta be real this is and that i'm not you know as long as it sound good as long as it's a great story i know some some of my brothers that's like nah if he ain't living he can't say it you know and i'm like well that that negates 90 percent of the hip-hop community i think it's a i think it's a magical way to do to, to do all of it you know what i mean like so ghetto by jay-z he's not really talking about nothing in particular but he just right it's just right you know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. shit is right time. You know? It's dope writing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think, I think yeah, though, he just went in. He went in. It was like. Yeah. I think, though, though the, 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 the growth, the growth, though, for me, that's what, that's what attracts me and shows the example of, like, I put 
you and a black thought and people like that that have like over the years shown the growth and that's why I, that's why i specifically said book of ryan you know what i mean because it's like it, it, it i sometimes i'm arguing with niggas and i don't know like have you actually heard the shit have you listened have you decided i don't know who i'm arguing with you know what i'm saying what's your your, your mc grade level i don't know if you've heard everything i've heard if you've you know like i don't know that but i know growth and i know when i hear somebody get better so could, could the, the bottom line is you asked a very blatant question. Could y'all stand on stage and destroy some of the top elite or as they like to say, top tier battle MCs? Hell yeah. I think it just got to be presented in the right way where it's just like, okay, now we in this battle stage. So a lot of, a lot of things that fly present. There's a lot of battle MCs that get away with saying bullshit because they say it real good. <laughs> yeah. But that's yep. part of the presentation. It's mm. no, no one when to pause. No one when to let the audience go. No one when one of those lines didn't hit and to keep rapping. And the, all of that is the skill that the battle rappers got that I think dudes that, that construct records, it's a totally different thing. It's, a, it's another reason why a lot of the battle rappers to this day have not gone on. No, nobody is a way for, you know what I mean? Like nobody is, is skipped to my loop. Nobody mm -hmm. has done the like, yo, I, I destroyed the shit in and one and I went to the league. I don't see nobody that has done that. So that's the challenge for them. But when they when they challenging real MC, and I don't want to say real, when they challenging MCs that write songs, you got to understand what that structure is of writing a song and like really constructing something that's different. It's a different talent. So it ain't, it ain't two things that need to be compared, but don't get it fucked up. The way you construct rhymes, could you destroy one of these battle rap niggas? Yeah, I don't. I don't know between Lupe and si that and Sife, That's 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 tough. I don't. I would have to see the battle again. It comes down to who's prepared, who got better stage. But we both know. We know they both can write. Is 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 what do you, what what you know? You th start throwing personals in there. You start throwing schemes in there. You start throwing stage presence in there. It's a lot of things that win battles more than. Acting like a savage out of nowhere. The Chicago niggas start coming up out of him. Say it again. I said Lupe, he jumps in his little moves and shit where he starts acting like a savage out of nowhere. That Chicago niggas start coming out of him. Yeah, I mean, yo. He, got a, he got a mean streak. Don't sleep on Lupe. Come on, man. I've been, I, I, I done known Lupe since, since Chill brought him to the studio. You know what I'm saying? And baseline, like, I done known Lupe <laughs> forever. He's a beast. He's a beast. Lupe, Lupe, Lupe easy to sleep on. I see why niggas sleep on him. They just... Nah. They just don't know no better. Pen. You can't sleep on that pen the same way you can't sleep on your pen. Like that's that's ignorant for somebody to do that. But real real rap, real talk with like no emotion. These battle rappers gotta really start respecting the pens of the writers, and the writers gotta start respecting the performance of the battle rappers. I think that's the balance. Well, I love them niggas. I think they are some juggernauts. I think that's they good. are juggernauts. But I got a question for you, great one. It's all good. Why has Jay-Z and Black Thought not work together, bro. I need to make it happen. That's that's something I need to make happen for me. For man, if you need me to do anything, please let no, me no, know, no, man. No, 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 no. I, you I, need I me know. to go pick somebody up. <laughs> 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 I know Thought well. That's my brother. I was just with him the other day. You know what I'm saying? I don't want mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about what we was doing, but like we was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no Jay Z verse. I wish it was, but I would love them two to make a record together, like top tier. Like you gotta understand. It's certain things like it's probably people in Detroit that gravitate towards you because you referencing certain shit that mm -hmm. in their lifetime they've experienced, they've been by those places. That's what Black Thought is for me. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like, like not only is he a top tier MC, he might say some shit that uh go over people's heads. You know what I'm saying? Me, me and my man twisting up some reefer and wishing we knew all the town, hitman in the likes of Sam Christian. Mm -hmm. You might not, not not know who Sam Christian is. Me growing up in that area, now he done painted a whole picture. Sam Christian mm -hmm. to us is like, we know exactly what that is. Or yeah. the other day when I was watching the, um, the Breakfast Club, and it was surprising to me that um, Charlemagne and, and, and um, Angela Yee didn't know nothing about the move situation. Mm -hmm. So for, for kids like us, I don't say kids, I'm, I'm 47, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, I mm -hmm. watched move happen. Right. Go on the television. I watched Mayor Good drop the bomb. I watched that whole Osage Avenue burn. It'll never leave my... So when, he, when he's referencing shit like that, it mm -hmm. touches me differently. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and it's like, it's, it's my type of thing. I don't know everybody else's situation. So, you know, the, uh, the world keeps turning like Ike's and Animes, uh, the church, the church hustling, uh, the church 
Kitchen hustle dinners every Saturday. Pull over, let me grab a plate. I tend to gravitate towards our fish dinners with the styrofoam platter taste. My granddaddy spoiled a plan that he half the ways. He used to ask about what path to take. He used to laugh and say, no man is an island, but I'm a castaway. The, them things is, you know what I mean? Like, I get I think, I think Your grandfather I think. might not have been around at that time to wear the bell bottoms to refer to Donnie Hathaway. Like, that's my life. Black Thought, Black Thought and Jay-Z are the two guys in the business that I feel like at some point in your career, you should aspire to, like, channel. Yeah. On some level, you yeah. know what I mean. No matter how, no matter how much their success is being marketed to you, I know Black Thoughts isn't that much. Like right. a lot but of I his think, success I think he's is in a comfortable like, space, though, Royce. Like, yeah. Right. So he not all in your face like that. So like, if you just looking on the TV and you aspire to be just what you see, right. you don't realize that like, yo man, he's so comfortable in his skin, man. He's like age appropriate. He dresses really nice. He's really successful. He rap really good. He don't be trying to do. He don't be trying to reach to do commercial shit. He just does really cool shit. Right. Yo, he just sits in a super cool space in the culture. And what, and the, I think what they need to understand, Roy, not, not to cut you off, is another point I'm just building on what you're saying. Y'all got to realize that for um, prior to them being on the show, you dealing with a roots and a black thought that had to do 200 plus shows per year. They always mm -hmm. traveling. They always somewhere else. Now you're dealing with a mind that's settled. And when I say settled, not like it was unsettled. I mean physically. Like, mm. being on a show every night is like, yo, I'm in, I go to work, I do whatever mm. I got to do, I don't got to travel, I, I got a studio here, the, the the brothers that's in the roots, they got family, they hopping on the train to get back to Philly, they seeing their family every day for the first time in like 20 years, you know, mm. like, their mental state is so together that now you getting this elevated black thought that could think about anything, because mm -hmm. he's not traveling all the time, that's just my observation, you know what I mean, yeah. like that. That sort of thing. And then Jay with the getting older, but still like he he, he always remains in his truth. That's the whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just stay in my truth. So whatever the truth is, but years ago it was Big Pimpin'. A couple mm -hmm. years ago it was 444. You know what I mean? I made, I put it back together. Now everything is love. It's, it's wherever we at. That's mm -hmm. what I think. This, almost to a fault, Royce. Mm -hmm. Because the nigga won't lie. Yeah. Jay won't lie. And, you know, and, and when I say lie, I don't mean make up shit. I mean like, just tell like the Biggie song that I said before of this ill story. He won't, he will not fabricate shit. He, he, he's really the embodiment of, if I say it, I did it. If I say I got it, I really got it. If I did, you know, like. Well, I feel like that's why, that's why the people can't give that back to you. They can't hand that back to you and say that wasn't right because it's right. your truth. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Hove to me using, he flexes that muscle that we have as creators. He makes you choose. Right, right. He don't let you just be on the fence. Do you, you think, love me, it or you hate it? Let me ask you a question as, as a creator, right? When you say that nobody can tell you that it's wrong, the way I look at it is like I, I'm serving chicken in a restaurant or whatever it is, right? Like, like you came to me because my chicken got a certain reputation or a certain taste. But mm -hmm. if you were to consume or tell me, yo, I like this, I like that, I like that, as the cook, I'm trying to service everybody. You see what I'm saying? Without without stepping outside of what I do, if I make Jamaican food, I'm not going to make Chinese food. But if I'm making Jamaican food, I'm going to be like, yo, they want their curry like this. They want they this. That's what I think about when I'm servicing because my audience is like 8 to 80. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So so in, in a certain sense, I don't mind if somebody come back to me as long as it's in the right shit. I mean, yeah, I can tell yeah. the difference to somebody that's just trying to argue versus somebody like in my barbershop giving a critical analysis to be like, go, I ain't really like that record because of this reason. That I'd be like, all right, cool, cool. I'm going to hit you with this. I don't have no ego to where it's like, if you say you don't like the record, then me and you got to fight. I'm like, all right, I'm going to make another one. And you won't like that one. Or maybe these other eight out of the 12 is something you do like. Like, that's how I view it because I'm trying to mm -hmm. service a bunch. Otherwise, this is how I DJ, this is how I produce, this is how I do it. Otherwise, I might as well just sit in my room and do the shit for myself. I'm actively trying mm -hmm. to put it out to the world and be like, do you like this? Not mm -hmm. not begging, not begging for approval, but just seeing what people like. It's a difference. So mm -hmm. I do try to service the audience and be like, yo, whatever you like. And I think that's the key to certain longevity and success, where it's just like, okay, sonically <clears throat> the music has changed, but we still remain the core. It's almost like the gangstar skit, where it's like, yeah, we update the formula, but it still remains this thing. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you that as a question. Like, do you see that as you getting older and you, and again, I'm reiterating this, you getting better. Do you make music just for yourself or do you make it to service an audience? Well, I came to a, I came to a point in my career where like I started asking myself really tough questions and I started being able to answer them. So one of the one of the first really tough questions was, who do you work for? Are you an employee of the people? Mm. So I decided when I did Book Orion, it was not possible for me to express in that way and be an employee of the people. Mm. There's no such thing as a piece of art that's relatable to all. That's one thing that we all got to realize. That's the first thing. Right. The second thing is people usually don't know what they want until we give it to them. Mm. So it's like it's a way that we have our finger on the post and this shit that, that like gets the attention of labels and shit like that. And then we get signed to them and somehow we convince ourselves that we need to invite people into that space. <laughs> but what, so what I, what I do is it depends on what the music is about, but I usually, I usually, it's like, Ho, oh, he keeps his finger on the post of things right. and he tells you what's cool. Right. Like I don't, right. I don't really, I don't really like, I don't really like, turn my nose down to people's opinions and shit like that. But I usually don't look outside of myself to validate me. So it's like, I feel like the things that came, the things that came the most natural to me and felt the best coming out and then resonated with me coming out, resonated the best with the people. Anytime I ever tried to shoot shots, I missed. And anytime I ever tried to chase something, it ran from me. Okay. I just don't think I'm that kind of artist. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But I'm okay with that. Yeah, you know what I mean, and I think it's like like you said with Black Thought. Once you get to a place where you're comfortable in your skin, then you can you can project things because you've arrived at a place you're not chasing no more. So you can project right. in a way that a lot of my truths that I told I didn't tell them earlier because I thought people wouldn't be interested. That's when I was working for the people because I was trying to think for them. You don't know what they're gonna like. You don't know what they're gonna be interested in. You don't know if the records that you're making in your room could change the world. All you know is you got to express it. You got to get it off of you because I learned a lot about myself just evolving through the art, through the process of the art. It was like therapy and therapy. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like there's never been a time where I was like, I need a radio joint. I need a club joint. Anytime I ever did that, God got up and walked out the room. Well, that was, that you know was my main, main I don't think Nas did that with Illmatic. I think, he, focus, went, I think he went in. Huh? That was my main focus of deterring that from people that, what you're describing is important, especially for the people. What what normally happens is what you just said. Somebody make music at wherever, right? They get attention from a label. The label signs them, right? For whatever reason. They come into the label. They make, they happy, they make 20 records. They bring those 20 records to the label. The label goes, all right, we could use like seven of them, but where's my radio record? Where's my girl record? Where's my da 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 da? And they go home and try to make a hit. And that mm -hmm. never happens. You can't try to make, like, you can't be like, All right, I'm going to focus on the hit right now. That don't never happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, the, very, the, the, the very thoughts that came out of your brain that said, I want to make a hit are the very things that made it to where it wasn't a hit. Right. That's what fucked it up. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And it's right. like, I understand why labels want that kind of shit because they're investing in something where they're just trying to see a return. So it's like they want something that they can put the money behind, but it's never been a time where I've seen a label invested in actually building an artist. So if you don't know what you are and how to scale yourself, they're going to try and tell you what that is, and you're going to end up making records for the machine instead of just kind of understanding you. Right. Like I got a song called Boom with DJ Premier. There's never been a statement, royalty statement, where it didn't show up on the royalty statement. Right. Then I got a song called Lighters that was the number one song of the year with Bruno Mars and him that showed up on a statement in such a big way. But then when it shrunk down, it disappeared. Right. So it's even subjective to me what a hit record even is. What's a right. hit record? What, is, what, is that, what does that even mean? And what do you want out of your career? If you on your path and you know exactly what that is, like the way Drake is doing it is beautiful because he's intentional. He knows exactly what he's doing. Right. He's not chasing. He just got a formula. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it just works. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my thing. I think I feel like you just got to find your essentials and find out what works. Because when you come into the shit, you're going to do, probably, you're gonna probably channel something. You see somebody else doing it. You're going to be try, probably trying to figure it out. And along along those lines, you're going you're gonna to bump your head. You're going to, like, Hove came in with the high pitch, with the, with the pip, 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 It was like him and Big. As soon as they laid back in the pocket and stopped trying so hard, right. the niggas, niggas changed. The, the niggas 
shock the fucking world. Well, it's the same thing, Royce. And, and, and people might not understand that, but it's the same thing. Imagine being Jay Z, and you know how dope you you, you are, right? In terms of rhyming. But people got to remember when Reasonable Doubt came out, it wasn't this big hit. It mm -hmm. wasn't a big hit. Big was ruling. Yeah. Bad Boy was ruling. And you looking across the street, and you like, yo, what is they doing that I'm not doing? You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's how yep. you end up getting uh, Sunshine and whatever else on 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 the second album, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. yo, but once you said, and, and he even says it in the rhyme, after I discussed, under my nose was the flow of all flows. Mm -hmm. Like, I just had to calm down, do me, literally walk away from the Bad Boy tour, stop chasing that shit, and go do what I'm supposed to do, and the next thing you get is the streets is watching and bringing it back to what I am. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So yep. it, it even it even nobody's um nobody's um immune from it because it's like yo like am I doing something wrong? But you got to be a creative to be able to see what the next move is when it don't exist. When, yeah. When, and he, was those, yeah. he was taking those. He was taking those meetings. Yeah. He was taking those meetings and they were saying dumb shit to him. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or 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 being turned down completely. Yeah. Nobody wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to do it. So. I'm just making it a point to say, like, at this point now in your career, and this may sound ill for me to say, and I hope you understand the way I'm saying this, mm -hmm. you are more popular than you've ever been in your life. Right now. Mm -hmm. Right now. There are more people interested. There are more 18-year-old kids going back to listen to your music. There are more kids looking you up on YouTube. There are more people my age that are proud of you for still representing what we stand for and carry yourself in a certain way. The way you carry yourself bring fans. So at this point, nobody can tell you none of that shit. You make the music you want to make, you put it out, you go on tour, you do all the auxiliary shit you want to do, but you've made the name for yourself now to the point where it's solidified and nobody can take that away from you. You don't need an A&R. All you need is a schedule release and a, and a dope-ass marketing campaign. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it's... I got to a point where I just, just decided I wasn't going to just do shit no more. Like, I just decided I was going to be intentional just with everything, just in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then not not being one of those guys just, like, selling people stuff, trying to sell people stuff, always marketing marketing things to people and pandering to people. I just don't like – I don't like that space, and I don't like the way I feel when I feel like I'm, I'm, I have an agenda or a motive behind Royce. corresponding with somebody. Royce, let me, let me, expl let me say this to you. The marketing part is not pandering, my nigga. It's not. You know what it is? It's actually saying, I got something good, and I'm putting it out in front of the people, and I'm trying to put it as many people in front of as many people as possible. No, so, my brother, I'm no I, I, no, I know what you said. I agree with you. I'm saying, I'm talking about the people who pander. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People, yeah, yeah, yeah the okay, people okay. who pander. It's like, okay. you know how, like, you could, you could really see it real clear, like, during the pandemic. Like, everybody's... Oh yeah, colors kind of like come out because everybody's kind of hyper focused on their computer screen. So you can really see everybody and what they have to offer, at least on face value, for what it's worth at the moment. You right. know what I mean? Right. And you kind of can call out. You can kind of see bullshit. You know what I mean? You, like you, you understand the viewpoint I'm coming from because for, yeah, yeah. For a long time, this is my problem with the dopest MCs that I know. They feel as though like I'm dope. I should be the best. Like people should recognize that I'm the best, and I'm like, yo. You haven't done enough to put yourself out there. And I'm like, yo, the problem is the whack niggas will do everything that in their power to put. They will tell the world that they're the greatest nigga ever. And they whack. <laughs> and my great dudes is like, no, the world's is supposed to know. And I'm just like, nah, like everybody don't listen the way we listen. Everybody can't understand it. The thing is, is who markets the best? Who gets their thing in front of it? It's like Steve Jobs wasn't the genius. Wozniak was the genius. Wise is the one who figured out everything. Steve Jobs is the one who promoted it. Apple wouldn't be shit without the promotion. That's mm -hmm. the point. So it's like me trying to argue for the people that I know are the best. And I'm like, yo, let me promote you more than what you promote. Because I know what it feels like. It's like, yo, I'm begging for attention. And grown men don't do that. That's how we was raised. Grown men don't beg for attention. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's I think we just in a time now, bro, where no nothing, nobody has to like, because I think it, it, it comes down to, like, people people uh, re regurgitating a lot of the anecdotal shit. Like, when they say um, people's um, attention span is fucked up now because of, yeah. uh, because of the internet and shit like that. I That's think, bullshit. That's I bullshit. Think, I think everything is so readily available to you. Yes. You don't have to search 
really hard for anything and nothing is really being placed in front of you all the time where you just kind of like stuck in the world of that. Remember when, remember when uh, Get Rich or Die Trying came out and it was like you couldn't go nowhere. It was coming out of every car. Right, right. Every, every store in the mall it was coming out of. And then it's like you got people that's like super huge now and you don't even really hear, you don't really have to hear them unless you yeah. go listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Because of streaming and shit like that. So it's just like, now it's like being on the road with Tech Nine and just being around different people and building different kinds of brands, like scaling the slaughterhouse shit, then scaling the prime shit, then mm -hmm. kind of like scaling my shit and being like just intentional with the people that I'm speaking to. I think the fans are just as intentional with what they what they like and what they want to hear. So people can basically build their own ecosystem around themselves and just yeah. listen to the shit that they like. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. I think I think like that whole thought of coming to, into the game and thinking that you want to have the music that everybody is playing, I think every that's that's what in, in niggas' minds is what success is. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. What get, goes what, in, what goes into that is a whole nother ball of wax that you gotta be on a major label or you just gotta come with a record that just is it's the right time and then it just connects. But if it's the right one, it's not gonna be nothing you can do to stop it anyway. Right, right. It's well, gonna find its way to the people. That's a different thing. What we talking about there is, is, is people defining their own success. And that's a whole other thing of me trying to express that. I, I, I'll give you an example. I ask people when I start working with them, like, what do you want out of this, right? Like, what, what, what do you expect from this? What is your goal? Because if your goal is that, the thing you're describing of, yo, I want the number one record and I want to be the guy and I want to walk in and every club is playing my record. Okay, this is what comes along with that. Like you said, this is how long it lasts. You, you understand these hits is only for this long. Da, 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 da. Or if, if God bless the dead, if I was with MF Doom, I understand exactly what his focus and where he's trying to go and who his core fan base is and why he creates the music that he creates and where, you know, you understand? Like the difference yeah. between those two, both can be successful. I, 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 I've dealt with both. So it's mm -hmm. just like, don't lie and say you really want to be the dude in the spot. If that mm -hmm. ain't what, you, you know what I mean? If that's really what you want, then go for that. It's a way mm -hmm. of doing that. But mm -hmm. it's also a time where I'm telling you that the shit about the attention span and all that is bullshit. My 18-year-old, mm -hmm. I got 25-year-old, 23-year-old, uh, who just gave birth from a new grandfather um, and two 18-year-old twins. My mm. son, if he goes and he sees, I don't know, a clip of of Tupac, mm. he goes on YouTube and watches every NWA interview, every Tupac interview, every Dr. Dre interview, a death row uh, documentary. He going to mm. ask me, did I ever meet Pac? Was you? How did you feel about this with you being so close to Big? And his whole antennas go up. He's 18. So, at, the same, so, at the same time, he's telling me gang affiliations in Jacksonville, Chicago, Detroit, every, Fabio Farron, and this one is battling New York, uh, Young and Ace, and this one is battling in Florida. The, he knows mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So are you talking about attention span? No, nah, they pay mm -hmm. more attention. The, yeah. the, the problem is that the actual devices that we use only allow you 60 seconds and 30 seconds and whatever that is. So mm -hmm. people are going to go, oh, they only look at these. No, once you, that's the advertisement. Once you reel them in, they do a deep dive that you will never understand. I'm talking about 15, 16 year olds in front of this YouTube. Believe me, they looking you up. Believe me, they have watched Boom. Yeah, my, my 14 year old, um, my 14 year old got autism. I was riding with him the other day and I, um, I asked him what he'd been listening to. This nigga said, Ice Cube, today was a good day. I'm like, how did, how did where, where that come from? He was right. like, it just showed up on my YouTube feed. I was like, and you just liked it? Right. Yeah, I like it. I was right. like, what do you like about it? I like the beat. I just like it. I feel like, I feel like NWA, Ice Cube, guys like that, like those guys, they had something to say. That's the first thing. They had something to say, which completely superseded any thought of making a hit record. And they also, I think, put more focus on making important songs than they did trying to make things that kind of like fit in. I think they went they went for a void, they filled a void and they created a pivot that's going to forever be encapsulated in time. Right. So it's going to it's going to transcend eras and no matter what happens as far as technology, people are going to always go down those rabbit holes because there's so much to grab take away from it. Right. No, you know I, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm I'm also saying too that 
those things are now okay take us right let's say let's say i'm making a beat in 1989 i'm reaching back to something that's from 1973 1972 69 whatever it is right that's 20 years removed so if somebody's going back right now as a kid and they 20 years removed they and this access wasn't there when we was that old i had to be in a record store i had to do the research. The kids nowadays is just looking it up just by the name. So they got access to way more information. So I'm saying at the end of the day, you, you won't even realize how many fans that you have now because of this technology and because of the fact that you're active. So it mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. So, so to them, my son is also one of the people that look at people and be like, yo, he like one of the 18 year olds that's on the corner and one mm -hmm. of the old hustlers get home from, from jail. And the 18-year-old look at him and be like, yo, you had your time. <laughs> it's our time. Like, yo, you, you don't own a barber shop, nothing. Like, you don't own nothing. You've been out, you was 20 years ago, you was out here hustling, and you don't own nothing? Why am I listening to you? Mm -hmm. That's their attitude. So yeah. it has to be the person that is, like, still doing good, that does, for quote, unquote, own a barber shop or own mm -hmm. something. They go and respond to producers. They're not responding to your word. They responded to, yo, you've been doing this for 20 years, and what do you have? What, what, what If I follow your word, what am I getting? That's you fair. That's what they, they, they got to physically see it. I, I've had young boys tell me when I'm trying to kick it to them and be like, yo, go, I get all that, but my niggas respect your rock chain more than they respect what you're saying right now. Mm. You see, you, you, they got to visually like be like, why? Why am I following that? And I'm saying, I'm saying to the degree that you as an artist now have the freedom. I've always wanted to say this to you. You have the freedom to do whatever the fuck you want to do at this point because of the fact of where we hold you. And I don't know if you know where niggas hold you, but because of where we hold you, you got the place to do it. Nobody's going to, nobody, everybody's going to be like, yo, okay, check this new voice out, period. Man, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate those kind words, especially coming from you, man. Now that's real shit. That's what that's what success is to me. You know, we said it was subjective. That's what success is to me, because these kind of memories, they span way far past like money and shit. You know, all of the shit that we think that we supposed to be here to get in the beginning and shit. That we think is gonna fix everything. It definitely you know? don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's gonna fix that. everything. Then we realize it definitely don't do that. But I think I think the space is just is just interesting to me because as an engineer, bro, I like I like looking at the landscape. I like when technology changed. I don't fight it. I, I, I like I'm like, OK, let's adapt. Let's let's do what we got to do. So for me, I just look at this landscape now and it's just like so wide open in terms of things that you could possibly do. And especially, uh, this is not, I'm prefacing this for the audience, but this is not for everybody. You have to be gifted. You have to have a gifted pen. Like, I can't write raps. That's not my gift. You know what I'm saying? I can make them sound really good, but I can't I can't write raps. So I admire niggas that write raps. Putting words together is something that I study, like raps. Like that's not a I'm not a casual fan of rap. Facts. Facts. I listen to verses. I almost memorize, I can damn near memorize verses by just me listening to the song two or three times. I'm understanding this person's career. I'm understanding it from a whole standpoint i i gotta correct some of my younger dudes sometimes when they make these facts and like oh Nas is the first person to write from the perspective of a bullet and i'll be like no the hell he's not <laughs> pharaoh ben did that shit you could argue about who did it better but don't say he's first you see what i'm saying that's that's the little things that i gotta correct but it's i'm just giving you the preference of when i talk about lyrics that's where i come from of hearing all the shit from the beginning mm-hmm so, was, that, was, that, was that Pharaoh or was that my man he was in a group with? The Organized Confusion. It was an Organized Confusion song. Yeah, yeah. I remember that joint. And that was the M1. Uh, Pharaoh and Paul. That was the M1. Yeah, yeah. How about him? He ain't, he ain't stopped getting better. Crazy. Fuck is that? What, what, what is it? What is it? Man. Well, I don't I know what it. he drinking. I don't know what alkaline waters. <laughs> <laughs> What you what you using to make your beats now? What you using? Uh, I'm all the way Ableton, all the way Ableton. Ableton. Yeah, all the way. I heard good things about Ableton. Cole trying to he tried to get me to switch to Ableton. Yeah, it's a, it, what, you know I'm on the pick your poison. So whatever whatever is the fastest way. You know, knife is on machine. I'm on Ableton. Um, 
pick your poison. Whatever, whatever's the fastest way for you to get your ideas out, whatever feels the best to you. I still fuck with my MPC. You know what I'm saying? I still pull it out every once in a while just to get that sound, but Ableton. And then and then mixing Pro Tools most of the time. So the the locks and dips it. It's gonna be a hard one. gonna happen on that day. It's gonna be a hard one. This is the, yo, so if we looking at if we looking at the locks and hit records, they got a lot of them. If we looking at Dipset and hit records, they got a Ooh. lot of them. And I think people are sleeping on how many freestyles and how many like nights that they carry. For us, it's K Slay. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about Detroit, but but in our area, it was like I was there with them. So you got to remember, it's not just Jimmy and Cam and and Jewels. Mm -hmm. When they came, every single person from the Dipset had the card to come in baseline and record whenever they wanted. Baseline, mm -hmm. we didn't we didn't book time. It was right. just, I was just always there. Justin's just always there. So the amount of freestyles these dudes got is just crazy. I don't know. It's going to always depend on how they play the records. Because the locks got so many that they could pull off that um, Money, Power, Respect album. I don't know if they're going they to go all the way to the Warlocks with the, uh, with the uh, ULC and all that. I don't know if they're going to go that deep. But then it's just like they got all the triggers ready. And you got Cam... <laughs> With the old boys, with the welcome to New York uh, City, with the Hey Miles, and you got Jimmy with the uh, with the balling. Like mm -hmm. Jimmy got like three or four that that'll just go. And they got, you don't even got to say the locks was the locks was just got the ones that, and the locks could pull out records with big. That's what I was gonna say, man. They both both sides is like affiliated with so many classic moments, even that, that ain't their individual moments. Like they just a part of crazy shit. Yeah, over the years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know how that that's going to go, bro. And the fact that it's in Madison Square Garden is crazy. That's retarded. Yeah, I wish I could be there, man. I'm definitely in the house for that one. I had to get my New York right on. Definitely, man. I'm in the building for that one. That one, that one is going to have New York City on fire. Because they, they so evenly match. But then if you go if you go lyrics, but I don't know if that's the, you know what I mean? If that's the. No, nah, it ain't going to be lyrics. It ain't, it ain't the battle crowd for the lyrics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, yeah, if you go straight lyrics, it's like you got to go with the locks. But if you go straight songs, I don't. It's going to be cultural impact songs. It's tough. It's tough. They both, they both got, got the them. same thing. Yeah, man. joel has got a couple, too, that you got to throw in it. Like, they could all get shit off. They could all get shit off. What, what do you play when they play Money, Power, Respect? I mean, that might be one of the rounds that you just got to let, you know. Let go? <laughs> yeah, let, that, let that go. Let that go, because you know they got them. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, what, what is, um, what's that one? What's that one? Ooh, yeah. That joint right there? Oh, 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 uh, 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 this is the anthem. Ooh, this is the anthem. Yeah. yeah, this is the anthem. Let that go. Nah, it was crazy. It That's around right there. Yo, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. That was probably one of the most, like, the most fun that I've had in Baseline, making that Diplomatic Community album. Did you mix that joint? Uh, some uh, certain songs on it. I recorded a lot of it, mixed certain songs, but it was a double album, so it was like we, we spread the mixes out. It wasn't enough time for me to do everything, but I did, like, Oh Boy, you know what I mean, uh, before that. But then on the Diplomatic Community, it was just, like, a double album of them just smashing out. And everybody was coming at their own time to like make. That's when I knew Jimmy was going to be serious. That's when I knew, like, because Jimmy stayed one time where they all went to. Uh, remember, we used to go to All Star Game and Miami was like the shit and was like, mm -hmm. yo, that was the biggest thing in your life. Like, mm -hmm. during one of them times, Jimmy stayed and he even had a cold and just kept recording, kept recording. I knew he was going to be like, just, just, yo, he works harder than everybody. That dude is just, he's a hard fucking worker, man. He don't stop. He's awesome. Yeah, I don't think niggas um niggas want to admit it, man, but Jim is the best. He the best nigga. He the best rapper in Dipset right now. And that, it's not to say niggas ain't oh, still niggas. dope. He's a hustler. He the best rapper in Dipset right now. I never thought that I would see that day where the niggas are just interchanged like that because they all been the best at some point. I don't know. I, I would say I would say Jimmy's the most prolific right now. He puts out the most work. That nigga nice. And, and and has and has a level of like none of this shit is whack. And he's fucking with the younger generation. That's the that's the beautiful thing. 
That nigga Jimmy, honey, he unexpected nice. Oh yeah, yeah, nah, he done, he done, he doing his thing. But I don't know that 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 lock shit, yo. I'm a, I'm a Styles P fanatic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like Styles is my favorite out the locks. As much as as much as Jada is, the thing with Jada was that Jada had a flow, and then everybody on 106 and Park, everybody in New York, everybody bit that flow for so many years. It was like Jada never got the props because everybody just like oversaturated you with the Jada flow. The whole 106 and Park freestyle shit was Jada's flow. The whole shit. Everything. Yeah, that's a good point. I never looked at it. I never thought of it like that. Everything was Jada's flow. And Styles got those, yeah. like, again, it's personal records. Um, uh, spent, Learned my first lesson in, in jail from a peasant. Always mm. seen pleasant. Happy to be present. He said he passed due. He should have been in the essence. Mm. Streets is the girl. Street are like your wife. You can flirt around with drugs, but don't hit the pipe. You can mess around with guns, but death ain't light. Hold your breath. Next step, because life ain't right. And if you're with the wrong cats, then your scythe ain't tight. Styles hit the dark side, show them the light. I'm co-defendant to the ice that freezes MCs. Friend of the flame, burn them in one game. And I tell Oxygen to not stop, to not hop in them, but they little time niggas. I ain't thinking of stopping them. Catch up first, we stressed up worse than them. Been experts and did less work than them. With no album, we network more than them. Like that, yo. And I, I talked to Ghost the other day. I told him he raised me. Them oh, niggas raised me, man. God. Them niggas, them niggas and Jay-Z, them niggas raised me. Nas. Motherfucking um, Dre, Q, them niggas raised me, bro. I would have listened to anything they said. Them yeah, niggas could have showed up in my crib and been like, yo, go jump off a bridge, little nigga. I would have been like, which one? Yo, I was just telling my young boy to, uh, like two days ago, I was like, yo, I'm still chasing 2001 sonically. I don't know what the, I, I would pay a million dollars to sit in fucking Dre go over how he mixed 2000. I have no idea, and it's just, it's still a holy grail to me of like, no, nothing sounds better than that shit. Nothing. Sonically. Sonically. Yeah, bro. I mean, I was there for a lot of that shit. I, I don't Jeez. even like, I mean, my takeaway, my takeaway from it was just, I wasn't really as into the sonic side of it as I am now, so I, I, I overlooked probably a lot of things, a lot of gems he was giving me, but I remember him just like, doing less than what I thought. I remember him, like, having everything just kind of up. Right. And, like, I think people think that he throw a bunch of shit on shit. You know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, he let it breathe. Yeah, he had shit be shit real clean, and it, it's just that he knows the exact fucking level to have every single thing, man, that dude can hear, man. Yo, he can I, hear, like, no person I've ever seen in my life. I've only been in the room with him for, like, literally 15 minutes so when we was doing um uh what's, what's the album he produced he produced a bunch of joints for jay uh shit uh kingdom come mm -hmm. right so when we was doing kingdom come like it's like yo we got all the records together got all the vocals jay was like yo don't you know email or none of that shit like take a hard drive and fly to la and give it to dre so i'm all hyped because i'm like yo i got a real reason to be in a room with dr dre now and shit you know what i'm saying like i'm super mm -hmm. hyped so i get there and it's like a fortress. The studio's like a fortress. It's mad. You know what I'm saying? Just wow, like security and shit. Mm -hmm. And they were the nicest people in the world. Like I got there, they was like, Goo, you got your weed, you got your drink. You can go over here, fuck with records, but Dre's not coming today. Oh shit. And I'm like, all right, cool, you know, no problem. This shit went on for like three, four days. But every day they making sure I'm good. They like, Goo, you good? You can come to the studio, you can produce, you can. You got your weed, you got your dinner. Every day, I'm super good. Fool, everything. So finally, I get in the, in, in the room with Dre. I give him the mm -hmm. Pro Tools. I play the songs. It was maybe like 15, 20 minutes. He was like, all right, thank you. And that was like my cue to leave. <laughs> I was just like, Damn. all right, cool. No, not, I don't know bullshit, but it was just like, yo, appreciate it. And that was it. And then he sent us the mixes. That was that was not like I've been I've been literally in the studio with him for like 15 minutes, bro. That that's a dream of mine. I know people be like, "Yo, you've been with everybody." I've never sat in and watched Dr. Dre mix a record ever. Man, I was 19 years old at my mom's house, and my dad came walking in the room like, "Hey, Ryan, somebody named Dr. Dre on the phone for you?" I was like, "What?" Grabbed the phone. Hello. Yo, what's up? It's Dre. Yo, Marshall played me your shit. I like it. <laughs> what you think about coming out here and, and, and working with us, man? We working on... That's when he was working on Crying 2001. I was like, what I... 
first time going to Cali, first time being in a mansion, first time being around a celebrity. I think one of my first times being on a plane, mm. it was like some surreal shit. It was like some surreal, some surreal shit. And it's like, it's nothing. It was nothing to me at 19 what I envisioned it to be like. It was way more toned down and chilled than I would have thought that it would be. He was, yeah. just, he was just real laid back with the ideas. He wasn't tripping about nothing. That's one thing that I always remember. He wasn't tripping about nothing. And that's one thing I keep with me when I create, man. Like, don't be in here all worried about shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be all thinking about shit. Don't be getting all upset about not being able to think of this and do that. It's like, that's that's your worst enemy right there. Yep. Dre didn't have no emotional attachment to shit in the beginning. It was just clay. Right. Everything can be everything can be improved upon and everything can be bust down, redone. You know what I'm saying? It's just sure. ideas. You know what I mean? No idea is a bad idea. So it was like, what you, so what you looking for? No, nah, nigga, just write. You like this beat? Well, listen to another beat. Lay something else. You know what I'm saying? And then his vibe, if you land something, he don't never give you a vibe while you land it like, oh, man, Dre might not like this. He real good with that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's super important. Well, well, stop there. Stop there, Royce, because that's something that's something I be trying to work on. It, is it that he don't say nothing to you or he, or that he, like, is reinforcing? Because say if I'm working with, like, my younger MC, you know, we got the kid Ruben. You know what I'm saying? Ruben Vincent, he's now on Jamila. Uh, we got him. You know what I'm saying? Right after Rhapsody, we putting, we putting him out. You know, it's, it's like a lot of younger MCs that I fuck with, and I be trying to, like, allow them to get their expression out without me interfering or dampening it or trying to just get them to you understand the spirit of what i'm saying i'm trying to critique mm -hmm. without without coming down on them is, is the point and i'm saying what did he say to you or was it that he said nothing um i don't remember him saying a whole lot but i just remember um prem is good at this too his 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 vibe his his spirits just be like kind of up he don't never look like oh man i don't know if i'm feeling what he's doing it's always okay. like okay all right you know what i'm saying like it was just like young young artists need that it's like um when you first get around people you know what i'm saying you, you basically they basically dealing with your representative you know what i mean like you can't even think straight because all you really thinking is making a good impression lyrically so it's like you automatically got to crack through that shell before you can get to any of the magic Okay. You know what I'm saying? So right, right. the first thing you want to do is just make them as comfortable as they possibly could be. Like I produced, I produced the album for Crooked Eyes Brothers, and I know that they some lyrical maniacs, but I knew that they would come in here, and the caveat would be, you know, like, let's kill some, let's just kill everything, and it's just like, yo, I knew we had to break through that shell before we can get anywhere record-wise, so I just kept them niggas talking. I asked them a whole lot of questions. I told them good shit about everything they was doing. Any any time they fucking was like, yo, what you think? You mean what I think, nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, stop second guessing, just go. You know what I mean? Then I start asking questions about Cali. Like, yo, why do y'all stand with y'all feet pointing at two opposite angles? Why do Cali <laughs> do that? I always wondered that. And the nigga was like, oh man, I never I never knew that. And then one of them came with the line, like, standing with my feet in two obtuse angles. You know right. what I'm saying? Like they had like a they had like a whole record about that concept. Right, you know right. It was just like the more the conversation go, the more the records start to flow, and we then it's that. not all about you know lyrical ki lyrical killing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because yeah. Yeah. it's gonna be lyrical. It's gonna be lyrical anyway. I mean, that's the only way niggas really know how to set up raps. But it's a genius way to do it all. It's a, yo, it's, it's, it. that's that shit is genius. Yo, the best MCs that I've worked with, and I try to have a conversation or at least get to know you or like you know we ain't just stepping in here like oh make a record. Right, mm -hmm. doing whatever we doing, but like Jay is one of the best at that at taking normal conversation that we have and putting it in the lyrics. Um, but that that is my thing of trying to figure out like, does this person need quiet and nobody in the studio, or does this person need twenty people in the studio that's like reinforcing like what you're saying is actually good, and me knowing how to navigate when you got twenty people in the studio type of thing to still really get to the genius. But it, it's me saying I'm trying to create the environment for you to do that. And sometimes the conversation is ahead of time. Sometimes the conversation is in the studio, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, like don't, don't get it twisted. And I'm saying this so that it don't get fucked up if, if people post this or whatever. Nobody's ever wrote a Jay-Z rhyme, right? right? But he'll say, like, I, we get a beat from Pharrell and we in the studio and I press play on the beat and I'm just like, oh shit, you already know what this hitting for. Mm -hmm. And the start of his verses, like, 
you already know what it's hitting for. My I got mm -hmm. whatever outside, and I'm saying it's like, oh shit, he just took our normal conversation and flipped it into the song. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you know that part of it of, of having conversation and figuring out because that's what I'm trying to figure out is like where are you at in your life so I can make you the best you and not mm -hmm. who I think you should be. That's what the record companies do. They go, I mm -hmm. need a, I need a little baby. I need one of those. Mm -hmm. So they try to take you know so and so from Detroit and make him little baby mm -hmm. versus saying so and so from Detroit. Where are you at in your life and Let's move, you know what I mean? Let's make the best product for you at your given time. That's what I'm trying to do to correct the the thing that you're talking about, about like roll out the sheet and cookie cutter the formula of whatever the artist is. We used that, we used that as bullshit at Def Jam, right? When I was A&R in there, where we'd have a sheet and it was well thought out of how to roll out an album six months mm -hmm. ahead of time. And I'll be like, yo, how can we roll out M.O.P. and Ludacris the same way? Mm-hmm. It's two totally different energies. Mm -hmm. Both can be hits. But why is MOP not over here with the slam dancing? You know, why don't we get them an appearance at the BMX shit or the fucking, you know, motocross shit with all the slam dancing motherfuckers? And then have Luda do his wild video shit and be all, like the rollouts for me, it was like no creative thought in terms of, Steve Jobs said this shit where he was like, yo, People look at my success and they try to institute the process. And it's like, you can never institute the process because you're never going to roll out another iPhone again when the world never knew what an iPhone was. You can't mm -hmm. bring any market research on the iPhone. You, it doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. So if you see yep. my success with this shit, you can't just mimic the, like it's a cookie cutter. Like it doesn't, you got to come up with another that's, thing that never fucking existed before. That's the problem <laughs> that I have that I have in the label space. Label label guys try to make everything a math equation in the science project. And I really just think the, the same way we talk about how taboo it is to overthink in the studio, because essentially you're just trying to capture moments, right? Mm -hmm. The more thought you put into it, the more we can hear, we can hear you doing all that thinking. You right, know what I mean? Right. right. <laughs> you capture moments, we can feel it a little bit better. But none of these things require so much thought, man. Right. Like, there, right. there's no, I could cringe thinking about 10 people sitting in a boardroom trying to figure out how to market Thriller. Go home. You don't fucking need to market Thriller, my nigga. Thriller is Thriller. You know Yo, what I mean? Thriller this is, how, is gonna this be is how, Thriller. This is how we, we was in Def Jam, boys. <laughs> oh, my God. You hitting the points. We was in Def Jam one time. We was in an A&R meeting, right? And it's this Ashanti record that has Method Man and Paul Wall on it. Right? And I'm like, who sat in their office and said, yo, let me take this R&B Ashanti record, put Paul Wall at the front, and put Method Man at the end? I was like, this is the most boardroom thought up fucking feature record that I've ever heard. This would never happen. Mm -hmm. Like, who thought of this? Who, it, this wouldn't naturally be. And it's not like Paul Wall or Method Man gave a bad verse or Ashanti's. It's just all this shit. Together. It's just obvious that y'all sat in this office and was like, yeah, we should feature two of our artists and put... Paul Wall on it because that's the time when like Houston was super hot. It was just this construct, and I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" I can see why it makes perfect <laughs> sense. Like to somebody who don't create, I can understand why that makes perfect sense because they think that that's how you make music, but they don't realize that even even the people, the listener, they can't articulate to you what they're hearing and what they're not hearing. They know when it's not right. Right. So we know when we're listening to a record, that's an insert verse here record. <laughs> we don't like those songs. We don't even know, but we don't like those songs. We hate those songs. Right. right. Get those songs the fuck out of here. Those songs have been dope in a long time. Right. Those insert verse here songs. Right. They just don't they just don't work, man. They don't they don't work. They don't do for artists what I think artists think that they're doing for them. I think when you make those kind of records and you do it to a certain degree, you're actually helping the label build the label and you're wasting your own time because nothing about, no, nothing about those records is a reflection of who you are. And if it's 10, 15 years from now and you're not performing those records, then you have to look at it like you lost some time. You got to do something to make up for that time. And everything should be intentional, man. Every time Fab go in the studio, he should make breathe. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Right. Right. Breathe is just an important song. Right. It feel right. It ain't just because it's so lyrically great. He captured a moment, man. He cap just captured a moment. He captured moments, man. Like B.O.B. captured some moments. Airplanes. Definitely a moment. 
No. No. No, I'm talking. I'm, talk, so. I'm talking about. I'm talking about breathe, not not airplane. I'm talking about. Oh breathe. yeah, yeah. Breathe is a breathe is important, man. Like like, fuck the frail shit. Right, nigga, that's important. Them records is important, bro. Turn my music high, high. When that nigga Hov get on stage, man, I've been to one of those shows, dog. They go crazy for that. Right, right. Now, I get you. Know you. What I mean, I get you. It so was the, like, it was the it was the it was the change of the guard when when Puff made the structure of a record to where it had to be eight bars, sixteen bars, eight bars, sixteen bars. But it's, like, a, it's a it's a it's a it's a very there's a genius way to do that shit, man. Puff is really, really fucking good at it. The problem, no, no, no. no, no. But what I'm saying that became that became the cheap format and structure code for this is how you make a hit record. Whereas before, to speak on your point, culturally we weren't restricted to that. I don't think people sit back and think like microphone fiend is all one verse. There's no hook. Mm -hmm. When when Cube just starts a record and is like, God damn, I'm glad y'all set it off. There's no hook. There's no intro. There's no. It it just comes on and he gets straight to the point there's a lot of records like that that prior to us chasing the money uh, the, mis the, mis the, miseducation, like, the miseducation to lauren hill breaks every law that they had in place at that time every she did everything that they said she shouldn't do right right and, and, and changed and changed the whole culture because it's just right you know and then mm -hmm. there's some people who's just really really good at you know structure and shit like that it's just, it's just knowing. It's just knowing. It's just about knowing. You know what I mean? That's really it, man. Like that Bobby Schmurder song, the first one, the hot nigga. Yo, before he dropped that, man, you couldn't talk to an engineer that wouldn't tell you, right? You can't do that. Right. I'm not gonna play that. Nobody's gonna listen to that because it ain't a hook. Right. Some of the radio DJs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me and, ask you this. This is my. Comes, this is my. This is a question I've always wanted to know. When when y'all was doing the slaughterhouse shit, was it a thing of let me write my sixteen and then let me let you write your sixteen and we spit our sixteens versus like we writing all of this together in the same room to get to a structure where it's like a Wu Tang record doesn't have sixteen bars from everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a it's rapping. Then ODB come in and baby baby come on, baby baby come on, baby baby come on. Another mm -hmm. nigga. First things first, man. You it's no structure to that shit, but mm -hmm. it feels incredible. Yeah. And I think that would be my only critique of y'all, where it was like such good MCs, but I was like sometimes it feel like it's just 16, 16, 16, and sixteen versus like what's the song. And we should intertwine on some EPMD shit, on some Wu Tang shit, on some which, Outcast shit, on some which, al which album? Which album are you talking about? I'm talking about the the last album y'all did, the, the last shady one. Yes, shady one? yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know when we when we were going through that process, bro, we did every single thing that you can think of. There's mm -hmm. so much cutting room floor stuff there. See, that was a that was a um, it wasn't a difficult space, but it was just. We were in that space and we subscribed to a lot of the, we subscribed to a lot of what was being said to like show people, you know what I'm saying? But really it was like hammer dance. Hammer dance was the most natural thing that we right. did. Which and feels it, the greatest, which feels the it best. It was just like, that's yeah. all we had to do. That's all we had to do, but it was it like. The best. But, um. Okay, so then then I, I walked in, I walked in Justice Studio one time, right? I had a session like right after y'all. And it was a whiteboard that had a bunch of songs on it. And I don't think I've ever heard those songs to this day. Mm -hmm. So there's like, it's got to be an album or some shit. I don't know if Just did all, I, I, I seen where like, it was like you, Just, I think Cardiac was in there. It was a bunch of people mm -hmm. in there. But like, is, does that music still exist? Like y'all y'all fucking with that? Yeah, we, well, that's the album we were working on that didn't come out. So yeah, that's okay. the that we did. The last one that we did on Shady that didn't come out. Oh my fault! I mean, I ain't, I ain't mean to drop by. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, just yeah. just is executive producing that one, so okay. that's why we were all out in New York like at the same time and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But um, the one on Shady, the one that we put out, we actually did a whole bunch of different kinds of shit, and Marshall was the one that kind of went in and picked the songs and kind of like lined it up and, and like arranged it how he thought that it should be. He put okay. like a lot of a lot of work into it and we like really appreciated that shit. You know what I'm no, saying? Go, go, but go. I just think I just think 
somebody on his level, he only knows, he only paint, he only sees the canvas one way. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like, and it, it got to a point where he has like a formula and it's like things change so much. And like just being able to read the room is probably the most important thing. And it was just like what we were, what we represented and the reason why people kind of like started to follow us. We didn't need to do all of that. Got it. You know what I mean? So yeah. like that album, that album was just the overdo. It wasn't nothing wrong with it. People didn't dislike it. It just wasn't what they wanted from us at that time. Right. And it's right. very, it's very important for you to know what you should be doing. And anytime you start looking at it, like I got to figure out a way to scale this. That's probably when you're fucking up. I mean, if you just develop, you, if you just develop as a human being, the music is going to get better. Yeah. If you're not reaching for something, but when you get into those spaces, you start to feel like, okay, now I need to do something to represent this new platform that I'm on, this bigger stage that I'm on. Right. And that starts to get in your head instead of just telling the natural story. You know what I mean? Right. So it's that's just a important, That's an important part that you, that you said, Royce, because a lot of times I'll be trying to bring like mature perspectives and shit, right? Because people will be like, oh, my record label, da da da, da. everybody wants to shit on the record label. And I'll be like, nah, it's just, it, one, stop calling it the record label. Like talk about specific people, like say names. Because, mm -hmm. it, you know, when you say, yo, Atlantic or Def Jam or Rock Nation or whatever. No, who who's over your project? Because that's whose opinion matters the most, number one. And then number two, it's like people can have the greatest of intention for you, but not necessarily make the right decision. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, like I'm sure he wants y'all to win and, and, and be the biggest that y'all could be. And that's his, like you're saying, his vantage point is coming from that of like, yo, I sell these many records. I'm trying to get you to that level sort mm -hmm. of thing. So it's not from a malice standpoint. You know what I mean? It don't mean you mm -hmm. no harm. But it's also a thing where, like, sometimes that person can be wrong. I've been wrong before. Like, mm -hmm. Blueprint 2 is my fault, me and hip-hop. I'm not taking the credit for it by myself. Hip-hop was in on this with me, too. But it was like Jay was working so fast and was knocking out so many records and them shits was good that we started getting it and was like, yo, Tupac and Big is the only motherfuckers that got double albums. Like, yo, <laughs> the little me, we started getting on that talk. And it was just mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe if we'd have just knocked Blueprint 2 down to 14 records, that shit would have been Blueprint all over again. But we mm -hmm. put 22 records on that shit, which was like, all right, we stretched it too far. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But it, yeah. was, it wasn't done out of malice. It was done out of, yo, I'm trying to put my nigga on this level. You know what I'm saying? Like, this mm -hmm. is the only two people that, that is like has done it, and it's Pac and Big. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, yo, let me, let me try to get you. That's where it come from. It don't always come from a a negative standpoint yeah and it's it, it, with me with me like i learned the most when i could find when i can hold myself accountable and i can find what i did what i did that could be corrected that could be approved upon and like i don't i don't really look at those misses like it's a like it's a bad thing it's like it you learn so much when you make some shit that the, the world kind of rejects mm -hmm. and it's like damn i missed my mark because i was shooting i was shooting for something you know what I'm saying? And it's like, right. M, he had all the greatest intentions in the world. You know what I'm saying? And even sometimes he's wrong. I mean, sometimes we all played our part. You know what I mean? But it's like, we got to understand that this shit is a lifestyle. Exactly how you live in your life, man, it's going to show. It's gonna yeah. show. But whatever whatever you got going on, it's man, it's, it's going to play a part. It's just like a fighter who stay out of shape all year and then decide to just go to camp for six weeks. When he get in the ring, he get in the ring, it's going to come out. You know what I mean? When Kendrick came out with Good Kid, Mad City, bro, that album don't sound like he was doing nothing but focusing on ki killing everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, when he did Control, he would just focus, man. He would right. just focus. And it's like, sometimes it ain't even about being the illest MC. It's about being the illest, uh, the uh, ill MC at the right time and being focused enough to see and be able to say the right thing. If you ill and you just drunk, right, then you're right. going to be on the sideline. Right. I mean that kid, that kid. That kid is an anomaly. I don't know yes. how to really. I don't know how to describe him because I don't think we've seen. And this this goes for any MC. And I'm saying this for Pac, for Big, for Jay, for Nas, for any. I don't think we've seen any MC that has never missed on an album. And when I say never I missed, what I mean is that is the body of work is at the level of all the rest of the body of works, but he constantly moves sonically, right? So so. You got to remember, I'm a K-Dot fan. Mm -hmm. Not a Kendrick Lamar fan. I'm a K-Dot fan. So me hearing all the mixtapes, then get into Overly Dedicated, 
right? Um, and, and, and being introduced to Janae and all that other shit. Then getting to section 80 where I'm like, oh shit, this is his magnum opus. This kid mm -hmm. is like, he's he's there now. Like he's not just a, let me throw some freestyles on the internet nigga. Like he's there now. Mm -hmm. Thanks for him to get the good kid Mad City where I'm like, yo, he just, per in, in a sonic thing, he just perfectly capsulated what it means to be affiliated. Mm -hmm. And that's so much more of everybody else's story than it is of the like, like everybody in jail is a kingpin, right? When you go to jail, it's like everybody's a fucking king. It's like, no, you're not. Somebody had to run the block. Somebody was serving eight balls. Somebody was a worker. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody. So just the reason I'm saying that is because it's a bigger story if you say, yo, no, I'm not a gangbanger, but I live in this neighborhood. I'm affiliated just from where I live. What's that clip? What's that clip that Jay-Z was in the studio and it was like he had a young rapper in there and he was just oh. like, yo, <laughs> man, these niggas is afraid to be themselves. Yeah. Like what's going on out here where people are afraid to be themselves? Yeah. And it's like, bro, that's like a that's like a black eye on our culture because yeah. I feel like we're missing out on a lot of great shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because Kanye had all the reason in the world to, to suppress all his greatness by being around niggas that was just way more aggressive than him. Right, right. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But he stuck to just who he was because he realized, I mean, I, I can only be me. Right. Like, his unapologetic truth is like the greatest shit that, ever, that the culture has ever seen. Who the Confidence fuck would have knew? The roof. Confidence level is through the roof. Through the roof. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's like, man, it took me a long time. It took me a long time. Not that I was like, not that I was like being somebody else or nothing like that, but I was, it took a, for a long time, I was only showing a layer of myself that I mm. felt comfortable showing. Mm. And it was always something rooted in like the social construct that's there that says the measuring stick for cool is some, you know, like souped up tough guy shit. You know what I'm saying? Like always, just always some aggressive, you know, rapper nigga shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like it got to a point where I would meet people and they would be like, Damn, man, you cool as hell. I never thought you would be like this. I thought you was just, like, mad all the time. Right, right. You got right. some people that think I'm just mad all the time, but you got some <laughs> people who think I just sit around and just rap all the time. Like, you call right, my father. Right, like, right. What's up? Rapping the syllables? Not been the billable? You know? Like, <laughs> and it's like, bro. I get it. That whole thought, like, damn, man, I don't think people would be interested in this because this ain't. I don't got the same story as everybody else. But it's like, bro, nothing that's ever been considered special in this culture was similar to what it sits next to in that space yeah. and time. Not, not yeah. outcast, not not Quimini, not life after death, not not the chronic. Everything was a shift. Yeah, now, and that's the, part, of that, part of that voice is what I'm talking about in terms of the maturation, the growth. So mm -hmm. for those of us that can remember and look at the guy that's riding around in the back of a van with a gun on him, with a jersey on, I don't remember what jersey it was, but it has something green on it, on a beef DVD. You know what I'm saying? Like, to see that growth all the way to where you are now, it gives a real reason for why people can say, okay, I'm listening to what he's saying. I understand what he's saying. He comes from the same place that I come from. So it's not about like, it's not, it's not about, it, it, it's Malcolm. Mm -hmm. You respect Malcolm because of Detroit Red. You Bro, know what I'm saying? Like, like you see where he came from. You see where he, the, the ones that get presented as I was pure from the beginning and then we learn they dirt, it hurts more. Then the person that's just Malcolm that comes out and says, yo, I was Detroit Red. This is what I was doing. And I had my road to Damascus moment. And this is what I'm on now. That's, Bro, that's more powerful. I couldn't figure out for the life of me back then why I wasn't getting support from my city. Mm. I couldn't figure it out. I thought everybody was hating on me. I thought everybody just didn't like me. I thought everybody wanted to fucking fight me. Until one day, I just like, fuck it. I'm going to start giving love. And you know what? I start getting love. Right that fucking simple right it's that simple right it's like it's just about being intentional you can't really expect things that you're not willing to give you can't be all competitive and then think just because you got a record deal that the city is supposed to jump behind you you have to like you have to go back and you have to be intentional with applying that shit back to the space shit ain't free man you owe if right. you want people who just get blessed enough to make it out of that space you owe Right. And that's how it go. It's already a big it's already a big ass communication gap just in between generations of OGs and shit. Like I came into the game, man. Me and Marshall came into the game idolizing cannabis, man. As soon as he fucking heard us, he started dissing us. 
No, I get it. It broke our hearts. Like, God damn, man, we can't be friends with cannabis? No, I get it. I get it. But that's what I mean? Because the culture got everybody not comfortable in their skin, man. Niggas got to be okay with moving to that next space, man. That's why I love Hove so much, because he was okay with moving to that next space out of that white hot spot. It's actually a bigger space. He's a different animal. Again, like I said with Kendrick, where he's just unique, Hove is a different animal. That's not a normal mind you know what i mean and I, I equate some of that to royce to being the nigga before you got in the industry mm. so if you was able to like buy out the bar and that's not new to you you know what i'm saying but you bought out the bar you didn't really want nobody to know what your name was and you didn't want the sparklers and it was just what you did that's different than i was a nobody and then this music business made me feel like i'm somebody now it's a different mentality so that's part of the maturity of it of of when you see with him but then even further than that, it's just a different nigga. Like, it's just a different special type of dude. Like, you don't, there, there are no other hymns. He's a one of one. He's unique. He's, you know, mm-hmm. you know it just is, there is nobody that on that level that can still understand, like you said, like, you know, do rags. Like, I, I made them understand why you do what you do. And I'm mm-hmm. putting it in that time period, but just average shit. So it's like, I don't know how to describe that. That's just, that's just a blessing from life. You can't, them type of dudes is just different. He's just mm-hmm. a different dude. You know what I mean? And, but, but again, I see as much of that in you mm-hmm. of being able to grow it up and being able to be who you are and standing on a square and standing on certain principles. Um, the communication that you give out and the type of talk that y'all start. And, and it's all started from, I'm like, yo, look at how you can control the culture from talking about lyrics and who's the best. And eventually you got to prove this shit. That's the whole point. The whole point is you could talk all day. Eventually you're going to have to write some shit to prove it. And if it make everybody pen get better, I'm with it. Oh yeah, you gotta keep that we gotta keep that pressure on. You know you what it prove it to me. You know what my OG, <laughs> you know where my OG ness started at? It started with Big Sean. Mm. When Big Sean first came, when he first started taking off, it was really, really hard for me to exist with mm. Big Sean. Mm. Really, really hard. I was going from alcoholic to sober and he was achieving things that I wasn't able to figure out how to achieve during my journey so far. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, the first thing I did was like, okay, so now what can you do for me? I think we always, we all do that. It's like, I fuck with him, man, because you know, that nigga sent me a first, I, he, he a real nigga. And I don't fuck with him because I asked him for something and he ain't do it for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And it was kind of like that. But then it was one day I just was like, man, I got to be, I got to just start being intentional with just being this nigga's OG and not looking at him like, what can he do for me? Mm. And start just being intentional with making sure that I help doing anything I can do to nurture his development and his elevation. You know what I'm saying? Once I started doing that, our relationship just flourished. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think how it has to be, man. It can't be like. The new nigga come out and he 20 something years old and he got all the pressure in the world to make sure that everybody's happy and he can he he facilitating everything for everybody like motherfuckers got to have somebody that they can call right to ask right. questions how well, the fuck are you supposed to be able here's, to figure here's out another this point Royce and this this goes directly to the OGs and the people my age right where is you got to like give them their time too and what you saying is is on the mentor tip and that's the the biggest thing it's like being able to mentor without trying to be in the white hot space. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yo, you 47 and you still trying to be that nigga in the club? Like you didn't get enough of that shit at 25? Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I be looking at it. So it's just like, yo, I want to make sure that I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy that's like, like, I'm doing victory laps for the rest of my life. It's mm-hmm. cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to like be the guy in the white hot space. I'm trying to help the guy in the white hot space not make the mistakes that I made. Mm-hmm. So if it if it come to you know it, it, like you said you sitting with Big Sean or me sitting with whoever I'm gonna give you the story of yes the first year that I made over three hundred thousand dollars I fucked up I wild out I'm walking through the mall with beans in them I'm buying five thousand dollar watches just because I got it That's part and, of then, it. and then the tax man come yeah and it's just like oh shit like all that money ain't your money. <laughs> So if I could give you these, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I went through it. I've, I've been through my account getting frozen. And yo, you owe, Uncle Sam ain't playing. I want my, this is me going, you know, in 1999 and 2000 going from, you know, making 20,000, 30,000 a year as a student and going to, you know what I mean? The big leagues. 
Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, if I can give you that game, if I can show you how to, this is when Chucky e. Thompson pulls me to the side. He's like, all right, nigga, I need to show you how to live. Mm -hmm. Not just music. Like, okay, you about to get a $50,000 check. You don't know when you get another check. Mm -hmm. This is how you pay off the bills. This is how you set aside for taxes. This is how you pay for the, the game. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with how good you spit bars. It yeah. has everything to do with how you live when we live our lifestyle. Being, being independent and being free is much harder than being a slave. Mm. That's the part people don't tell. They be like, yo, okay, you're supposed to go this independent route. Yeah, but guess what? When you ain't on the plantation, you got to own land. You got to plant food. You got to know how to do all that shit. You got to know how to build a house. Mm -hmm. You got to know plumbing. You got to... It's a lot of shit that come with being free. Mm -hmm. So we could walk around and be like, yo, I work for myself and I don't work for no white man and I don't do... This. Yeah, but it's a lot of responsibility come with this shit. Mm -hmm. And it's all on you. So those are, the, those are the lessons that I think the OGs need to step up and they need to lose a little bit of still trying to be the nigga. Like, that shit is nasty to me when I see that. Like, yeah, looking, they look, niggas is looking for, niggas is looking to them for validation. Like, they coming into the game needing to be validated, and niggas is looking to them for validation. Niggas yeah. is looking to them for the cool. You know what I mean? No, it's they supposed start, to be, start, it's supposed to be step. Bullshit. It's, supposed, it's supposed to be the thing of, okay, in the music business, when we first started, whether or not that's in Jamaica, whether or not that's in the United States, everybody getting jerked, producers is making all the money, nobody make no money. We get to a certain point of, of education to know what publishing is, to know we're not supposed to sign our shit off. Okay, that was a generation before us. Hip hop come in and say, oh, okay, now nah, we're going to move your executives out the way. We're going to move all this out the way and make all this goddamn money. Imagine, imagine me being 22 years old. And Puff is 25 years old, and he gets $30 million from Clive Davis. Mm -hmm. $30 million at 25? Mm -hmm. We was all wild. We was wilding. Oh. We was, it was just like, yo, like, somebody got to show you how to, how to move with this. We're not supposed to go backwards. We're supposed to take the lessons that we learned and give it to the next generation and go, okay, now y'all got the wild, wild west. You can own this shit yourself. You don't need no record label. Oh, okay. Even if you do want to pair with the record label, stop looking at it like, yo, I'm going to be a slave. No, what do you need from them? You got everything. You produce everything. You mix everything. You may need a marketing team. Okay, well, go pair up with them. As a, all you need, I'm going to walk over there and be like, yo, I need your marketing department. How much does that cost? What percentage mm -hmm. of this album do y'all need to move this marketing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that thing where they don't want to think, man. I mean, it's, 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 only, it's only in our culture. It's only in our culture where we come into the game and we so afraid of the record label because we heard so many horror stories and bad things about bad deals and shit like that. But it's just like, if we've spent more time just like educating each other on how to do good deals, then it wouldn't be those stories. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, niggas think that like, it's a prerequisite to sign a bad deal. Oh, it's just my first deal. I know it. Nah. All, every first deal is a fucked up deal. Who the nah. fuck up that, nigga? Nah. What? Especially not if you're in a position where you've built up enough equity on the internet, you not have power, you not have negotiation power. That's the whole point. You you don't want to negotiate before you get hot. Once you get hot, you got all the negotiation power in the world. And then we're supposed to be giving you the game to go, okay, don't sign this 360. There's absolutely no fucking way that the record label is supposed to be getting money off your merch and off your shows. I, I refuse to do it. Mm -hmm. I refuse. It's not, I feel like I'm robbing everything from an artist if I go, yo, give me your show money and your merch money, and mm -hmm. I'm already taking away your record money. Now we on streaming, where it's just like, yo, okay, now it's an advertisement. We get it. Okay. But how the other way? I'm not taking that. So we're supposed <laughs> to give that game. But it's not a thing. I, too many times I see where it's like, again, it goes back to this point that I'm making, Royce, of where we got to really do the work and stop using these names like they them, the man, Illuminati. No, call out the motherfucker's name. Mm -hmm. Who's the head of the company? That's a problem that we have in the United States because companies are considered people. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? They'll say, yo, a BP oil spill. No, who's the fucking president of BP who let this shit go down? Who's the, who's the head oh, yeah. of operations that might have decided to do this shit and the president don't know about it? And it, No, call a name. Oh yeah, well we 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 hold everybody accountable. I mean, we hold, we hold nobody accountable but Jay Z, Puff, uh, Master P. I get it. Jay Prince. I get it. I get it. I get it. We hold ourselves accountable <laughs> like a motherfucker. I get it.
nigga be like, yo, Jay-Z, I, I just want to tell you everything you did wrong. But it's like, yo, nobody's holding nobody else accountable for nothing. No, I get it. Man. And it's like, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't understand why we, how we became so accepting of everything. Like that 360 deal, the whole concept of that is just like, the only reason why that's a thing is because we said, okay. Well, exactly. The, the, what, where it came from real quick is from the ringtones. So when we had contracts before, this is another argument that I make all the time. When we had contracts before, we didn't have the ringtones in there. So the ringtones start popping. And the record label see that everybody making these money off the ringtones and they're not getting a cut of it. So then they said, okay, I got to And this is at the same time that the download was going crazy. Mm -hmm. So they like, yo, I got to lock my slave in even more. I need money off your auxiliary shit. I need the ringtone money because ringtones was popping. So mm -hmm. then they accepted the 360 deal. And it's just like, yo, how are you going to do that? At the same time, it's like, yo, you're not really understanding that this ship is going down. I was in a meeting in Def Jam and I asked this question. It was very simple and everybody laughed at me when I asked this question. I said, yo, how are we going to sell music and music is free? This is before they understood that my son is going on the internet, downloading the torrent of his favorite artist, you know what I'm saying? And my mm -hmm. son is even better than the regular person because the regular person is just going on a, on a website and downloading it. How are we going to sell music and, when music is free? What are we doing? Well, let's let, let's look at it like this. Let's say let's say let's say for a uh, better story analogy, I was a drug dealer and I had a whole closet full of bricks, right? Right. Like the Connect saw me selling these bricks and he said, "Man, I want in on every other part of those bricks too, man." Right. Because I'm watching you make money. You know right. what I mean? So everything you sell, I want you to give me a piece of that, then I want you to give me a piece of that, then I want you to give me a piece of that, and that, and that, and that, and I just say, okay, like, you wouldn't accept it in the street. You actually right. would probably go commit a violent act against <laughs> Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. It's like the, the thought of it is just preposterous. It's like, yo, I'm watching you make money, and I don't like not being a part of it, so let me put something in place that's going to include me in every revenue stream that has absolutely nothing to do with me. I've never spent any time being you know, to build you. I'm not the reason why you're touring or you're selling ringtones. I'm not, I don't have anything to do with technology. I'm just somebody with a big ass bank here that I want some of your money. And you're well, just going to be because I'm the record label. This is, and, and not to get too deep, but this is, this is history repeating itself, right? So for those of us that study, you know, technology and study history, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm deep in the tech world. I just study this shit. So it's not the first time it happens, right? Every time that um, society switches, we get this. We get a fight back because the way that we made money before switches and we have to give new importance to something else. Meaning, um, look up, look, and this is for the audience too, look up the word the Luddites, right? Mm. The Luddites is, is in England when recorded music first started. So what the argument was, was that, yo, if you make this new thing called a phonograph, why would somebody come to a show to hear me if they can hear my voice on a record? Mm -hmm. So all the live musicians started hating against the creation of the phonograph. Of course. Right? And it was called, it was called the Luddites. And, and the Luddites is, is the, the, uh, the uh, word that covers everything that has to do with the Industrial Revolution. If this machine can twist the cotton faster than me, what's my job? not seeing that we're creating other jobs, mm -hmm. right? And we're creating other industries. It happened again with us, with the industrial revolution, with auto, with everything. We create other jobs. The information age is the first time where we created something new, but we made the new thing free. Mm -hmm. That's the fuck up. The fuck up is that we say the information is free and the information shouldn't be free, right? Mm -hmm. But legally, I can go on and I can stream whatever music. So what we've done is we've removed the music itself as the commodity, and now our music is used as an advertisement for someone to pay nine ninety nine to get onto someone's server. That's all streaming <laughs> is. And it's you can access my it's server that has millions and billions of songs. Pay nine ninety nine. I've gone, and, and it's simple now because it ain't but three places you got to stop. Mm -hmm. It ain't but three record labels. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what yep. the subsidiaries say. It ain't but three record labels left. Mm -hmm. Right? Warner, Sony, and 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 uh, Universal. Right? Mm -hmm. That's it. So it's like I stopped three places. I do the pub deal on a top level. Now I stream everything. You as the individual got to go, yo, take my shit off of there. Imagine, imagine going into a record store and they say, hey, welcome to the record store. 
Look, if you will look to your left, you we have old people rap. If you look <laughs> to your right, we have young people rap. If you look over there, we have rap for the girls. If you look over there, you know what I'm saying? It's like right. streaming is absolutely just a tech based thing. It has nothing to do with music. It's marketed right. to the people who consume music a certain type of way. Right. So like if my demographic are young kids who put, sit and play the video game and just let my shit play all day, then I'm going to stream more. But it doesn't mean that since I, they listen to Travis Scott's music more than I listen to Jay-Z, that they like him more than I like Jay-Z. Here's the real trick, Royce. When you signed your deal, there was no provision in there for that shit. No, we didn't so get how the, the fuck get the, can you get tell the, me what, what the rate is? You can't tell. I never agreed to the rate. This is the point. Nope. I never agreed to it. There's no, I, I brought this point up a long time ago. And I'm glad you got on this, right? This is when it first hit me. When iTunes first started putting videos on, wow, long, long time ago, right? When they first started including videos, you remember you could buy videos for like 99 cents? Mm -hmm. So I, I went to the label. I was like, yo, this freeway video cost me $300,000 to make. There's no provision in his that's a that's that's tacked on to my budget as an a and I'm going to my a and administrator. That three hundred thousand dollars is an advertising thing. I make a three hundred thousand dollar video. I walk it to BT and MTV, and I beg motherfuckers to play it. Mm -hmm. It was advertising for you to go purchase an album for ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Now you're selling my video. Mm -hmm. We don't have no agreement on what my cut of that ninety nine cent is. Mm -hmm. How the fuck are you selling my video without telling me or without me even like this? This is the questions that started to come up. So then when the streamer mm -hmm. came along, I'm like, yo, I didn't agree to this rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would get in bed before they came to talk to us because it, because you know what it was? It was, yo, this downloading thing is going to be the death of y'all. This is AIDS. It's going to kill everything. And one person came and was like, yo, I got a band aid. I got a way for us to survive. And we and because we was breathing, I want people to understand that this ain't stupid people. This is people who don't understand the change and they're trying to survive. So they're grasping for air. And it's like, yo, you grasp for the wrong air. You're trying to tell me that in the whole universal system, which Def Jam is under, that there's no one who can write a website. No one knows HTML. No one, no one in the tech department can write. That's all iTunes is, is a fucking website. Mm hmm What's all streaming is, is a website. No one can write that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Nobody thought about this because we still trying to sell a physical piece of plastic. And I was trying to make this point to be like, yo, we sell intellectual property. The, the medium that it comes on don't make no difference. Matter of fact, my daughter's like, yo, why they still fuck with plastic? Why they still even put, this is, you know what I mean? Like in the early 2000s. I'm, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering why they still, why they still Yo, why do they still talk about the first week number? I think that's just like marketing. Yeah, retarded. Retarded. Marketing. It's like marketing just to get artists to keep competing. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like, bruh, that number don't mean shit no more. It's an old, it's an old paradigm. That shit don't mean nothing. That motherfucking it's an old paradigm that we still holding on to. That's that's all it is. The first week number don't mean nothing. It has, it has nothing to do with your impact. It has nothing to do with the zeitgeist of, uh, of, of hip hop at the time, the feel that you put in, what you can get from shows, what you can get from your merch. Like a first week number is not going to tell you how much merch, how much merch Griselda is selling. It's not going to tell you that. Yeah, because you got numbers and then you got energy. Right. It's not going to tell you that. You know what I'm saying? The energy never lies. The numbers you can kind of fuck around with. You can doctor around a little bit. You can make some things look a certain way, but the energy is just the energy. You know what I'm saying? And when you create it, you, you nobody can fuck around with it. That's the reason why people are always trying to recreate it. That's what they're trying to recreate, the energy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you ain't going to have that energy. Royce, you ain't going to have that energy. You know what I used to do? I used to leave baseline, right? Say, say, you know, an album coming out, we used to come out at 12 o'clock at night, and the big thing would be like, yo, the record store that's on 42nd Street, I would leave baseline, which was on 26th, and I would walk up to 42nd, and I would see how long the line was. So the 12 o'clock line would really let me know how good an album was going to do. If the mm. line is like wrapped around the corner twice, I'm like, okay, we're going platinum first week. You know what I mean? I would get it. Them moments don't exist no more. That shit don't exist. It's, it's viral and it's pockets. So mm -hmm. the same thing is me judging that off of a line in New York City going around the Virgin store 
I, I now can't see what the effect of what I do is that day in every country around the world. And you got to be in tune with the fact that this shit is bigger than just your city now. So the first week number don't mean shit. You can have the, a huge impact everywhere around the world. Everywhere. You'd be surprised that, like, when I play your records, when I'm spinning in Tanzania, and people love your records, of course, of course, I'm going to play Boom. You know what I'm saying? But I'm playing mm -hmm. other records, too. And people in Tanzania are like, this is my shit. People in South Africa are like, this is my shit. And... As much as people want to put Dubai and all this as the like lap of luxury, there's also a whole culture of people that's like, I don't want to hear that shit right now. I want some real shit. So in Dubai, you could go there and get a bag for the like real hip hop shit. Like mm -hmm. this is what's going on around the world. I'm making a point to just say like them numbers don't mean shit no more. It's your impact and where you can go. Now, you could be famous as fuck and have 20 million followers and not be siphoning none of the money out of that shit. Mm hmm you got to go find out where your siphon is at. Where where do you draw the money out? Where are the shows at? Where's the people across the world that I can sell a t-shirt to? Where's the people that really watch? Like, you'll be surprised at how much shit people don't realize they're affecting. My dudes in London that, that just run down what's going on in United States hip-hop. My dudes in Japan that just run down what's going on in United States. Like, they, the world is listening. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot. I love, so I love when people. I love when shit. people say, and I ain't nobody trying to. Ain't nobody thinking about no damn lyrics, and then until Black Thought go to flex, then all of a sudden, mysteriously, everybody's thinking about lyrics. Like Kendrick, Kendrick did that control verse. That shit trended on Twitter for five days. I loved it. Niggas was like, I don't want to hear no lyrics. That nigga did that one thing, and that's all it. everybody could talk about because I don't know if you ever seen this video. It's a video of me and Ninth, right? Like uh, Rhapsody had a uh, some event. <clears throat> the day that he dropped it. So me and Knife is there, you know what I mean, just talking about somebody's filming and shit. And that's what I was saying. I was like, yo, he made people do what they supposed to be doing every day, which is care about their pen. Mm -hmm. Dudes is in the studio. I was like, yo, dudes is in the studio, hovered over, back then it was inboxes. I'm like, dudes is hovered over inboxes, rewriting shit like, nah, that's not good. The shit you do every day, is this good enough? Is this top quality? Am I making my points? Am I doing? It ain't just the regular throw out a freestyle to the internet shit that people do every day without caring about the level. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's what the control verse did, and the fact that he he played chess so well in terms of just saying I got both of them coats in my hand. I'm not dissing the East or the West. I'm the king of the whole shit. Now mm -hmm. come knock me off my crown. Mm -hmm. It was that's a, it what was the a, beauty of it was. It was a beautiful pivot, man. It was a beautiful pivot because. I don't always like, I like to see everybody getting along. I don't like people being against each other in a negative way. Right. But I still like people to be like Titans. You know what I'm saying? Like not necessarily competing with each other in terms of chart space and thinking that we in a competition in that way. Cause I, I feel like we'll get a lot more done in solidarity making demands. That's right. what I personally think, you know what I'm right. saying? But I think that we should all push each other. Like, you know, and everybody subscribes to their space. Everybody is like dedicated to their space. You got the niggas that do this kind of rap. You got the right. lyrical niggas. You got the this nigga judge and this nigga. But really, we ain't so far. We're not so different from each other. Now, you know it's what I'm a saying? Sport, Royce. It's a sport. So that's what I'm saying again. It's like, yo, you. I'm the best basketball player, period. I got to get out there and prove that. Mm hmm. I got to prove it. I got I to gotta go out on the court. Now, after after we ball, I'm going to buy you a beer. You know what I'm saying? Well, not you. You know what I'm saying? My fault. <laughs> but we're going we gonna to eat. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have a dinner. We're going to break bread. We're going to mm -hmm. do all of that. But while we on that court, I'm trying to show you why I'm the best. And in sport, a little bit of the time, like, it's a little easier to judge because we have actual numerics. I scored more points than you. I got more rebounds than you. I won the game. I'm the leading, you know, this person. I got the most blocks. I got is rap is so subjective that it's like it's hard for us to score certain shit because me and you is not scoring on the same card that everybody else is scoring on. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we've heard a lot. I, yeah, I, that's when I used to be like just in Detroit, like to myself, not really fucking with niggas like that. It wasn't until I got in Slaughterhouse that I realized, like, I was not as good as I thought I was. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't until... You didn't think so? You didn't think so? I mean, They might hate... Now, let me not say that. They might... Joke well, no, I, I mean, myself. I think all of us... I think you're the best nigga in Slaughterhouse. That's just my personal opinion. 
Listen, bro, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But listen, I think every artist needs to come to the realization that we are not as good as we think we are. You mm -hmm. know, it's very, very, very easy to subscribe to your own bubble and not mm -hmm. really have a full understanding. Like I was talking to Lux and Mook and Lux was like, yeah, man, you know, Lupe, you know, I, you know, Lupe. And I was thinking to myself, like, you haven't listened to my music. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, no, 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 of course not. I get you here and drag you to them deep waters, boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to be, I want to be the guy who knows. I don't want to be, I don't want to be not in the know and then have to find out, like, Crooked came to this motherfucker and changed my life. You know what nah, I'm saying? He's, he's incredible. And to yeah. me, to me, yeah. it's like, I, I need, I need you here. I need to see, I need to, how you work. You know what I'm saying? I can send you, I can send you some shit, you rap on it. But how do we, how do we perform in the clutch? You know what I mean? Like, that's a good, that's a good gauge for me. That nigga's automatic with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to hear you, like, bragging about that one thing that you did that's so great. I mean, you got to keep doing that shit. Jay-Z kept doing that shit. Jay-Z ain't nah, nah, you know, you know what that is, voice? You know what that is? That's the nigga that's 50 years old still talking about the touchdown he made in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Al Bundy and shit. That was his only time. <laughs> no, nah, man. Only time of greatness. You know, and, and, and again, I, say, I, I humbly say that to people that when they argue with me, I'll be like, yo, you was hot for a summer. You know what I'm saying? I've consistently, and I don't talk like this, and I've been like, yo, I've consistently done this for these many years. Even when it's not the white hot space, I've consistently been in where you got to talk about what I'm doing. That's not easy. So it's like, when you see the artist that sells platinum, you're like, that's great. Do it again next year. Mm -hmm. That's great. Do it again next year. Now, guess what? Do that for another 13 years. Then how And then you could come talk to me. <laughs> Yeah, get, getting get, catching a moment, man. That's that ain't shit. That's you can go outside. You can go outside and slip on a fucking rock and catch a moment, right? You know? But having having the where having the wherewithal to go, mm -hmm. yo, auto tune is murdering right now. Everybody's <laughs> using that shit. We should go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. That's not for us. That's not what we do. So you get death or auto tune, and this is in a room with Kanye. You, you understand what I'm saying? We having this conversation with Kanye and No ID. About mm -hmm. like nah, Jay, you should be the anti that go, and it's not about T Pain. It was about every other person is using that same yeah. effect just to make a hit. T Pain ain't got nothing to do with he. It ain't got a, nothing to do with him. <laughs> it ain't his problem, right? And I feel like Hov, he was in that spot, man, where he realized what his job was, and he was doing his job. That was his job to do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was up to him to do that, man. He had to save us. No, absolutely. It, it, it's just decisions you make about again. Where you at? Like, when we first started that record, we started it in New York. We was at Rock the Mic. That we, you know, we had moved from Baseline to, to, to 27th Street. Rock the Mic was a little bit more uppity, right? It was cleaner. It was nicer. It wasn't the hood. But Baseline was the hood. Like, hood mm -hmm. shit came out of there. Rock the Mic was a little nicer. They making Rihanna records and shit in Rock the Mic, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. But the point being is that I had Kanye and I had Jay in there, and because both of them were such big, artists outside of just the music at the time mm -hmm. it was too many people and we, we too centrally located in new york anybody could stop by mm -hmm. and it wasn't like it was like um hanger honors and no bullshit like that it was people that actually had real business so like somebody from the nets is stopping by jay gotta sign something kanye got some fashion motherfucker stopping by he gotta sign something and he gotta okay this and, and i'm just like the music is suffering mm -hmm. so I'm sitting in the room with them and and um uh, uh no ID and and uh one of Kanye's other men. I'm trying to think who else was in there. Um shit. Another one of Kanye's person was like, yo, you gotta really come to Hawaii. Mm. Like that's when Kanye was Don C. It was Don C. Mm -hmm. Big up to my niggas. So he was like, yo, you gotta come focus, like focus these niggas in Hawaii. As soon as we went to Hawaii and there's nobody stopping by. And like we wake up in the morning, Kanye got the chef. We go over there eat. We go take. We literally was just walk to a high school and start playing basketball. And the kids is coming out at lunch, and they like, yo, is that Jay Z and Kanye playing on our basketball court? Like mm -hmm. shit, like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that allowed us to focus and then go. Okay, so far we've been this. Where do we need to go in hip hop right now? Mm -hmm. Right, that's one of our challenges because it's like, yo, this nigga said everything. What 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 else is there left to say? But he mm -hmm. always finds a way to figure it out. So mm -hmm. one of our main focus was that as being elders and being like people that could lead the culture without a risk of 
is this going to affect my career? Am I going to sell? Mm -hmm. We're not worried about selling records. Like I said, I'm mm -hmm. on victory laps and shit. I'm not worried about that. Mm -hmm. Money's not the point. The point is mm -hmm. art at this point. So right. it's just like, where do we go? And that's what the conversation was. And that's why you get a death for auto tune. And that's why you get a thank you and like, you know, blueprint three type shit. So it's really about that for us, my nigga. Like what mm -hmm. you just described is, is, is the focus of where the fuck do I need to take the music and this blessing that we have where it's like, I don't know any other musical genre where was me as almost being 50 years old can tell you every move that these 18 and 17 year olds can make or have been making through the music, mm -hmm. which is almost like the challenge for me in my, cause I'm like, yo, if, if, um, uh, what's the boy academics mm -hmm. and trap Lord Ross and like, oh, I forget that it's a dude, it's a white boy in London that they be breaking these fucking gang shits down. And I'm like, mm -hmm. everybody get mad at them. I see them arguing with mice and all that. And it's just like, I be wanting to holler at my son and be like, yo, don't let these niggas take you off your square. Like, do what the fuck you doing. But I be hollering at us, the OGs, to be like, yo, how the fuck these young niggas know more about our kids than us? Right. They break this whole shit down, and I be like, no, this is what the community organizers are supposed to be doing and using to go talk to these young boys and be like, yo, let's, let's calm this down. It's the same thing I do. Like, I can only do it in North, you know what I'm saying, in Jersey, because... I'm with Raz Baraka, right? you know what I mean? Amiri Baraka is my, my, my college roommate. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I know my mayor. I love my mayor. But we need mm -hmm. to be doing this on everyday level. That's the, that's the point of the, uh, where else can the 50-year-old even understand what the fuck Young and Ace is going through? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you in Detroit. Who, who else of the, I'm talking about the, not the, not the ones that come to when you throw the 24 hours a piece, Royce, and, and the kids that come. I'm talking about the real shooters. The only yeah. nigga they gonna don't listen to is you. Period. Yeah. That's the yeah. power of what we got at this point. If we step up and be real, when I say grown man, I'm talking about parents to our children. When I say children, I mean the younger generation of hip hop. That's why it's so important for what you're doing, my They don't see you as a joke. Mm -hmm. They see a lot of other niggas as a joke. Oh, this nigga just doing this shit for views. This nigga want he he that how old he's still worried about. No, they don't they look at these niggas as a as a as common. Oh yeah, it's 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 interesting to um to feel like to feel the light resistance from supporting somebody with no strings attached. The youngest a lot of the youngest don't know how to they don't know how to take that. Right. That's like, okay, what's that? What this nigga trying to do? Right. You know what I mean? He's trying to right. fucking squeeze one in on me because that's not even a thing in niggas' minds. You know what I'm but saying? It's, it's, it's still our job to reach back and to be like, yo, that's, that's just me personally. That's my... No, that's me That's me too. Like, my yeah. thing, I got to get to them first before they can get to me. Absolutely. Because you leave them to their thoughts to start telling you what you're thinking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the first thing they're going to do to the OGs is tell us what we're thinking if we don't, right. if we don't get to them first because... Yo, that, what the fuck are they used to seeing? Niggas hating on each other. You know, niggas not, you know, talking bad about each other, talking down on each other, everybody competing with each other. Yeah. And the problem with these niggas now with the internet is they think they can have it both ways. They need to subscribe to the tough guy shit and they think that they can have a career too. Come on, man. If it was that fucking easy, fuck it. Let's just all go to Hollywood, right. man. Let's just build a fucking, you know, fantasy world. You can't have both, bro. Right. You got to pick one. You got to pick sides. You know what I mean? You can't be. I mean, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot there, Royce. It's a lot there. It's a lot there for us to help with. It's a lot for us to change the perspective of or what success means. It's also a thing where I try to I try to show them like, yo, you may not be Drake, but my nigga, if you make one hundred fifty thousand dollars in a year, you looking at a fucking teacher, you looking at a doctor, you looking at a lawyer in the face and like, yo, you can't fuck with me. I make one hundred and fifty off music. To them, if they make 150, that's not success because then they can't run around with the big car with the. But it, yo, you know what I mean? People went to school, pay loans to make 150 thousand dollars a year, and would be happy to do that because they would live their life. The same. They not buying dumbass jewelry. They not okay. If you buck up, if you make the 150, then you get some shows. And this one show, you like, oh, I made 30, and I'm gonna go buy me this check. Great. 
You know what I'm saying? But it's the lessons that we've been trying. Don't buy them silly ass baguettes until you buy a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a hard sale right there. You know what I'm saying? Don't buy them silly <laughs> ass baguettes until you buy a house. I went and bought. I went and bought myself a whole kit before I bought anything. And, and, and again, that's from me being lucky and having real OGs. But that's not just a Jay Z line. That's like a line that like. That's how I was raised by these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Between him, OG Wan, and people like that. Like, yo, my nigga, 22 years old, the first big check I got, I put a down payment on the house. Fuck a chain. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to impress none of y'all niggas. Oh, I was trying to impress everybody. <laughs> that was my thing. I thought that, I thought that was part of it. Every time I went to the jewelry store, Pharrell was in there. Every no, time. and it's not to say, Royce, and it's not to say I don't have jewelry. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the line is a perspective oh, where it's I like, yo, I got to have my house my I know car, Priority. everything else before I buy the joint. And my biggest joints, to be honest with you, was given to me. My rock chain was given. I didn't purchase it. It was given to me. You, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the point of saying, like, what is your focus, my nigga? Because you shouldn't be feeling like you broke if you make $150,000, $200,000 a year off music. It's just you got to move a certain way. And if you move like that for two years, I guarantee you, you'll be able to move on a big boy level after two years. Mm, Imagine if you got that's two years sale. back of you buying frivolous dumb shit. I wish I could have it back. Yeah, because the key, the key is to look like you moving on the big boy level. Yes, so yes. That's really all it is, and it don't take a whole lot of money. So that hundred and fifty shit that can be applied to making yourself look like a the rich, the rich nigga, because that's your leverage. That's your leverage to do all the fuck shit that you think that you're here to do. And and I'm trying to. It, it, it's it's also. I give you this example, Royce. It's a balance now because we older, right? So it comes from a stand. It's like 444 to a certain extent where, and this is me interpreting what Jay was saying, where it's like, I'm not telling you don't do these things. Have we all been in the strip club? Yes. Have we all put money to our ear? Yes. Have we all? I'm not saying, I'm saying it gets old. I'm mm -hmm. saying it's not important. I'm saying in the scheme of things, that shit is bullshit and it's quick. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying to the young boys where I'm like, yo, I'm not telling you don't have a good time. Go out and have a good time. But I'm telling you, learn off my experience that if you could thug out being hot for two years and stack that money without buying frivolous bullshit, you're set for the rest of your life. That's what we don't do right there. We don't use we don't use the we don't use the information that the OGs we don't use it. We don't use it because it sounds too it sounds too reasonable. You know what I mean? Like, we're not here for reasonable. At 20, we think it's supposed to be like the shit show. So everything, when you make too much sense, it's almost like you push them into the noise. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like, it damn, they got to let it, let them get it out of their system. And it ain't nothing wrong with having, having good taste. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's something to be said about some of those purchases that you can look back on and say, yo, that was ridiculous. And that's <laughs> probably which, how you learn your best lesson. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because yeah. the nigga with the sense that's telling you that's ridiculous, you just think you hate me. You know what right, I mean? Right, you right, right. It, you want to hear it, you're wet. You but that's what, I'm saying. Saying. that's what I'm saying. It comes from wisdom because you had to go. You can't tell them if you ain't go through it. If you yeah, ain't go man. through it, they're not going to hear you. But I'm saying, and, and again, this is the way Chucky Thompson taught me, where he was like, yo, I know you want to fuck up some money. So mm -hmm. here, even put that to the side and fuck up some money. But this is the amount that you should fuck up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and he put it in percentages of like, yo, this percent put away. This percent pay your bills for six months. You just got a $50,000 check and you have no idea when you're going to get another one. <laughs> this is what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's a, that's a fucking have. death sentence right there, boy. Yeah, you know, boy, you know what I'm saying? For, like, for, for a kid that's coming from an environment with no money, $50,000, woo, you think that's a lot of money? Woo, that's a death sentence. Uh, that's it's a, a death, death sentence. sentence, yeah. Yeah, that's a so trap again, right there. Again, it's our responsibility to kind of explain that and to show you how to have the fun. Now, is every kid going to listen? No, but at least I told you so my conscience is clear. Mm, what, yep. what you decide is what you decide. I got kids. I've told them a million times, don't do this, do this. Now, I love them. They've done some things that I told you not to do, and I react and support you after you fuck up. You know what I'm saying? That's parenting. That mm -hmm. is love. That is us as an older generation showing, like, yo, this is what you do. This is those of us that understand going to jail and coming home and what that feel like. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, now you're supposed to be the ones pulling them up and showing them what to do and what not to do. And if they listen mm -hmm. or not, at least you gave them the game. Right. Right. That's the point. 
you can't that's make that's anybody, you know what I'm saying? That you can't make anybody do what they don't want to do. But at least nobody, nobody necessarily came and was like, yo, to our older artists, this is what you need to do. This is the traps. This is this is how this go down. Nobody did that. Yeah, and that's that shit should be that that's that should be a part of success. Like you should look at that shit like a part of your success. Like if the days that you just went in and then taking your ball and then just going home, that shit's dead. You know right. what I'm saying? Like right. it has to it has to come with you applying everything that you learned, all the mistakes that you made that shouldn't be in vain, and applying it to the next generation and making sure that niggas don't make the same mistakes. Not, not even to sound fucking corny, man, but it's like, dog, we got to get to a place where we looking at a nigga's success and getting the same fulfillment as if it was our success. Like me watching you become a millionaire is just like something that we have in us that no other group of people is ever going to do for us, man. Like right. we sit around and we really like regurgitate shit like, oh, this nigga made me a millionaire. No, white people don't make black people millionaires, bro. That's not a thing. <laughs> That's not a thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We can do work together and be left with what's left, and it right. may equal up to a million dollars. But well, nobody's being intentional with making you a millionaire. There's a whole other point to that, too, Royce, to where, like, okay, now that you have the million, right, you have a responsibility because everyone in your family don't have a million. So there's a different vantage point that we start at versus someone else who may achieve the million, but everybody in your family is cool. Everybody in your neighborhood is cool. All your friends that you know, they family is rich and they cool. They come from a... So we have a different responsibility just if you get to that point of what the million dollars is. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, there's different... I don't want to go too deep. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm, I'm on some... All I need is my SP-1200, my MPC-3000, and some records, and, I, and Trinidad, and some weed, and I'm going to have a really nice life. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot else that I really need. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? As long as my kids is together, I'm, I don't care about the rest of the shit. So I'm on some shit where I'm just like, yo, I'm trying to be the oil painting 50 mm -hmm. years from now, that when everybody's at the table and there's 30 niggas at the table and they look up and at the end of the table is an oil painting, they're going to be like, yo, that nigga said it for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it ain't that about me and my one security. So if you have a blessing in your lifetime to amass a certain amount of money to do something, it's like, I don't really need a whole lot. Bro, as long as the crabs is good, you know what I'm saying? I can I can climb a tree and cut me down a coconut in Trinidad. That's all I fucking care about. I'm, I'm being real honest. That's all I care about. But yeah, that's, that's what. You but that you know, you know what success you know what success is for you. And I'm saying, yeah, once yeah. once once a man can get to that place, man, like it's really that's when it's like you can focus on what you were here to do, and like the money will just be with you. Like I, and, and Royce, Royce, I would be remiss if I didn't say this comes after. Yeah, I've already done the groupies. I've already yeah. done the tours. I've already done the. You know what I mean? I've been around the world. I've already done the like. Yo, I did the biggest show in the world. I've already done being at the best party ever. You know what I'm saying? Twenty thousand times. I've already done the menage a trois. I've already done the. That shit is old. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The new shit is yo. It's this young boy named Delane, named Delane Purnell. He is the biggest third round of any young black investor ever. I mean, young young black startup ever, ever, ever. He got this shit called Play VS, right? Mm. So now um, high school and college esports playing video games mm -hmm. is, is a sanctioned sport in the United States. Yeah. So now our kids can go to school, get win a scholarship to college mm -hmm. for playing a video game, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This young brother, and I believe he is from Detroit. I think the, the I think Delane Purnell is from Detroit. For real? He created the platform. It's called Play VS that they're going to play all that shit on. This nigga got million. Nobody talks about him. Right. So I'm like, all y'all little fly. I'm talking to my dog. I'm like, all y'all all y'all friends that is after the rapper nigga and all these niggas that got a million dollars. This nigga just got $90 million. Mm. Why y'all not flocking to him? If you talk about the money in the, I'm like, it's not a juicy, it's is, not a juicy enough ninety million dollars. <laughs> this is what we need to be talking about and promoting. So it's like in every lane that you want to, you talking about the money. Okay, this nigga got a million dollars. This nigga got ninety million dollars. Should help you. It help you become a better parent. I will tell you that, man. <laughs> I, I wasn't even allowed to have a fucking cell phone. These niggas, these niggas can play video games for a living. I try. I play video games too much. My dad be like, "Get your ass off that game, going in." I'm just, I'm just hitting us with the, with the, 
where our focus need to be on what's going on right now in terms of who we worship and what we worship. You see what I'm saying? Like that's, that's the, that's the real thing of, right. of, of when we, when we hear these buzzwords of tech and coding and all this other shit, it's like, all right, well, who's doing the actual work? It sound good, mm. but if y'all really in the coding, they come over here with me and Rodney Sampson, put your money behind OHUB. You ain't even got to put your money. Just put your resources and your time behind OHUB, Opportunity Hub that's in tune with all these black colleges and all these young people and all the shit that I be doing with all, I'm not, I'm not just, you know, the musical engineering has taken me to a point where I could talk to the young black engineers of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, yo, okay, I see all these places that we could be putting our money and this is real shit. Like these dudes is out here getting real money for their startups, but we still talking about some dude that, you know what I mean? Worshiping the dude that got a song. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, it's some, it's some young cats out here that's really, really fucking moving. Mm -hmm. That's who we need to be highlighting and being like, yo, this is how you can move. And this is what the, the result of going a specific way. And the reason I use Delaney is because he comes from us. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Broken home comes from, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't supposed to make it. But intentional. But just super locked in. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's a, another lane that we're supposed to be showing everybody else, especially while we got the eyes because you like You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the, the, you know, the, yeah, you know how the real key to this shit after, after we get through to where we can have our own, that, that's the, that's the negative part about the way the young people have flipped the checking in shit. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. I used yeah. to be proud. I used to be, and I'm still am, but I'm saying in, in, in 1996, I was proud to check in. Mm -hmm. I know niggas in every state. You know what type of power that is? Every mm -hmm. state that I walk into, I'm going, yo, I'm here. That's my man. He's going to make sure nothing happens to me. I'm in his community. When he come to my community, I'm going to take care of him. Checking in was a, a beautiful thing. We used to call it the nigga network. Mm -hmm. That's what we called it. It was like, yo, and not to you, you know what I mean? I'm trying to use that word less, Royce, but it, we mm -hmm. used to call it the nigga network. It was our network. Niggas that ain't boule. Niggas that didn't join a fraternity or a Masonic Lodge or whatever, and not, nothing against that. But for us, hip hop, this was our nigga network. This mm -hmm. is how I could come to Detroit and know niggas. Mm -hmm. This is how I could go to LA and be cool. This is how I could go to Texas and be cool because I'm checking in. But the check in ain't about like, yo, I'm, I'm bowing down to a nigga. It's like, yo, what you got going on? What I got going on? How we can help each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that takes a certain level of maturity too. You know, before our brains even develop, we, we thinking about standing up for ourselves and, and standing our ground. You know what yes. I mean? Like, nobody checking me, nobody doing nothing like that. We stand on our own. We ain't listening to what no OGs talking about. We'll kill them niggas, too. And they think that that's, like, that's the move. You know what I mean? Nigga, I got, to a, really. point, I got to a point in my life, bro, where I just looked up one day and was like, motherfucker. Right. It never was about that. Right. The whole time, it never was about none of that shit that I thought it was about. That I'm humbling shit, man, because it's like it's programmed into us to think yeah. a certain way. You know what I mean? And it's like the way that niggas think, it's like that's, that's literally what's going to determine whether a nigga is successful or not. A bunch of niggas can rap and make songs, but niggas is thinking they sells out the game every day. Yeah. And it's yeah. impulsive decisions. You know what I mean? Like, we're not... We're not raised to be critical thinkers or to communicate. It's just a whole lot of talking back and forth, arguing back and forth without no real purpose to get to a solution. Niggas is more comfortable just yelling at the problems. You know what I mean? And it's like, I can't be, I can't exist in a gray area, my nigga. I get, we got to be one thing or the other. We should never have to be in the gray area. And it, nothing that should happen in this rap space that should make you want to bring serious harm to a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you should yeah. even have time to think like that yeah. because you should be so invested in what you're doing because this shit is a fucking lifestyle. You can't hit the clock in this shit. I mean, it's no way. It's, it's, so many, it's so many things that are different now that it's like, that's my biggest, I don't know, the biggest problem that I can't figure out, my brother. Like, I can't figure that shit out. I can't figure out how, for the life of me, where it went to that point of, like, just murder you know what i'm saying and, and and where the murder is is um talked about on record and then celebrated 
that part of it I don't get. I don't understand. And it's, and it's like one of the things that I may be old or whatever, but I'm trying to like figure out how it got to that point. Well, I know, so, I know social media exacerbated everything. Oh, no, okay. of course. No, no, the, the point media. you made, Royce, Royce, the point yeah. you made is perfect. And what it did is it fucked up the conscious community, too. It fucked yeah, it us just all made the way it, up. It just made it to where nobody wants to take an L, you know what I mean? So the whole right. thought of, like, fighting, it's like they're not thinking like that because it's like I just can't take an L. So I'm going to kill you or you're going to kill me. And then no, no, the whole no, rap. Royce, I'm talking, I'm talking even, even on the level of the conscious community. Mm -hmm. It stopped being about building, and it became so and so versus so and so. Yeah, but I hate that. That's corny. And debating so and so, and who can debate better, and like it became that versus building. So now, when I, you know, when I go on Sonetta, it's 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 so and so versus so and so, rather than the builds that we used to have in the late '80s and the early '90s. Of I'm learning some information. So even the, in, the internet, has, I'm saying it to say the internet has even fucked up the conscious community, my brother. Like. That yeah. part of it, let alone the rappers that's really out here shooting, like for real. It's causing a bunch of confusion. It's causing a bunch of confusion. Like the young is just following just to see what perspective they, like what ideology they want to adopt. It's just a bunch of confusion. It's just a bunch of people disagreeing on, on, on moving to, to, to the same solution. Well, my job, my job is to sort of figure out a way to, to, to try to ease that with all, and I'm not saying that me, like me, solving the country's problems, but I'm saying a way in which I see so many, as I travel the country, right, I see so many grassroots organizations of people that are actually out there. They're not on the internet. They're not looking for fame. I could tell the difference between the dudes that's just talking on the internet for, like, internet views, mm -hmm. through money, versus people that's actually in the community doing work. But to be able to combine all of those and to a degree where it may need to be where we treat this as a health problem and mm -hmm. to be able to get money from the government. And, and I know a lot of us step back when I say shit like that, like all oh, the government, no, but I'm saying, I'm saying it in terms of this is what they owe because mm -hmm. other people are getting the money that our taxes pay for, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? For, for mental health. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's almost like a thing where we got to treat this like a health crisis because it's, it's like, I don't know how to diffuse that shit. And when I say that shit, it's like, how do I stop this young man from shooting this young man when he already killed your brother? Mm -hmm. And then it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now, before it was the, how do I stop this when he killed your brother? Now he killed your brother and made a song about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we used to be worried about beef spilling over, getting in, the, getting in the shit in the music space and then it's spilling over into the streets. Now we worry about the streets spilling over onto the record. Absolutely. Because that exacerbates everything. That makes time of the essence. Now it's like, now my reputation is on the line. You done blew the whistle on it. Now I got to, now I got to come now. I was What's just going to what, what, what was the old movie where it was like, yo, me and you got a problem. We can solve that. Mm -hmm. If me and you got a problem and the world know about it, that's something different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now I got mm -hmm. my bravado. I got to keep my shit up. I got to play this role. I've been in, the I've world been in, knows about it. I've been in situations where I know that I drag my feet on communicating, mm. and I, I I watch I watch firsthand instigators elevate the situation because right. I didn't get out ahead of it, right. and I know I know if I had been sober and just a little bit more intentional with just speaking to people at the right time, we I could have got to a better place and I could have prevented a whole lot of fucked up shit from happening, man. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like. The communication part is just something that we just overlook because it's just easier to go to that space, man, where it's like, fuck niggas. It's just like when new rappers come out. Fuck that nigga. It's easier to do that than it is, to, yo, I like him. I'm going to support him. I'm going to post that. Yo, man, you dick riding. You know what I mean? Like, love is taboo in our culture, man. It's taboo. It's too easy. It's too easy to publicly just fuck, be fucked up toward a nigga. That's why when I, when I started... Um, talking to competitive shit with the rappers, I had to get everybody on the phone just to like, just to make sure that everybody understood the page that I was on because everybody is just so used to people, us just being so fucked up toward one another. You know what I mean? So it's almost right. like, it's getting to a point where it's like, okay, if we're going to be all be cool with each other, then we can't be competitive. If we're not going to be cool with each other, then we get to, it's like one or the other. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be under our control. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we got to be more in, intentional with the way that the culture 
moves because anything that happens that's negative affects us differently. That's why I don't understand how DJ Vlad is still a thing. He I don't, I don't, exist. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get that either. I don't understand like why people still do the interviews, but again, people want that attention. And if you've seen over the years, like what this, what the end result of it is, why would you still go there? Because you don't, you don't understand your value. Mm. You don't realize how much value you bring to a platform just by sitting there and speaking. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's something you do so effortless, you can't place a dollar amount on it. Right. But that's what right. they're doing. They're monetizing everything that is you. Everything that is cool, everything that we think, everything about us, we must just assume that it's valuable and it's worth money. You know what I mean? And we got to stop just giving it away for free. Right. And if we can do that, we got to understand what we're doing and we got to police it because... If niggas, if niggas go, if Juvenile go on Vlad platform and him and Buck get into it, okay, yeah, it's entertaining. But then what happens if it escalates to a funeral? We got to go to that funeral. He ain't got to go to that funeral. Right. That shit falls on us. Right. I don't like, I didn't like watching Nipsey get fucking smoked on the internet. That right. shit changed my fucking life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't expect that shit to resonate with another group of people like it resonated with us. Right. We got to be like, we got to be more like just into what we're doing. And we got to be like, okay with like, Grab, like like wearing the shit like this is our culture bro like don't right. yeah this is our culture you don't get to just do whatever the fuck you want to do if we right. say apologize to the minister white man apologize to the minister right. we should have to right. think about getting violent and none of that it's our shit right and i get it. i think, I, I think I'm, more, I'm just more on the i'm more on the time of of us like checking instead of me checking vlad because i i feel like that culture vultures is always going to be there I just feel like I'm checking us to be like, why are you still sitting on that couch? That's yeah, the problem. Of course. Like, and I, you're and freely I, and I, giving your energy to this thing that you are. It's like it's like a new crackhead. It's like, yo, you tried tra crack yesterday? Like, yesterday you tried crack. Like, you don't know what the fuck this shit does to people. Why would you try crack now in 2021? You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, it's like yeah, yo, if I've they... warned you, if you've seen every sign, if we've done, like, why would you do it now? Yeah, that's see, that's that's another thing. That's a, see to me, that's a separate conversation. Okay, now, I okay. think yeah, yeah. I think I think I don't think we should follow behind Vlad and just like constantly be giving him our energy. But we must realize what we're looking at. If we're looking at somebody who built their platform off the backs of our culture, that's yeah. okay. As long as we realize that and we realize that he's selling our trauma back to us, yeah, that's fine too. But that has to come with guidelines and boundaries, just like anything else. If he blatantly disrespects somebody, like if he mis misquotes the minister, he has to apologize for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if, he, absolutely. And, if he, and if he doesn't, it shouldn't take any more energy toward him. That should then turn to us, and we should all be able to come to an agreement just like that. And all right. we have to do is just not give him our attention anymore, and we'll watch that shit melt like the Wicked Witch of the East. You know what I'm saying? Again, again, it's, it's it's partly on me because of my mind state of where I sit, where the way that I view the minister or any of that. Like I, I don't like DJ Vlad's comments on the. I'm like, nigga, you you looking at it like how dare you disrespect? And I'm looking at it like it don't even fucking matter. Like, my, you talk about a man that, that that put information into our community for my whole life. I don't care where you are on the argument of certain viewpoints. We're talking about someone who I've watched take people that come out of jail, his organization, and reform everybody. So D Vlad, his on the minister, that has nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I look at it. Like, it, it, it's, it's so minuscule in my thing of like, and I get what you're saying. He has a platform. You have influence. You disrespect it. You said that he, and you can change a little bit of the thing. And I'm like, that shit ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it definitely don't have nothing to do with that side of it. But the focus is him doing it and directing it directly at our culture. Yeah, no, absolutely. It'd be, it'd be different if he was, like, talking to his culture. You know what I'm absolutely. saying? Like, absolutely. he'd do whatever he want to do in his culture. We don't, yeah. we don't need to be policing nobody. But you're coming directly into us, into here, shooting straight at our kids, and you're misquoting the minister with things that has been used and weaponized against him to paint him as something. And right. I believe it was done intentional. And I believe that you can do shit like that when nobody's policing it. When everybody's just looking at it like we every man for ourselves, you can get away with you can get away with a lot of things. Because I had a conversation with him, and he told he decided not to not to apologize. And the reason why he didn't is because he didn't have to. You know right. what I'm saying? And right. to me, to me, that's telling. 
to me, that's telling because in no other space is there a situation where you don't have to. But Nick Cannon didn't get him. He didn't get a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. They were very intentional. And I think it's, it, it's it, you have to be that way. You have to be that way to keep order so we know each other's boundaries. Sometimes we got to teach each other how to treat us. We don't know when we cross. They don't, he don't know when he's crossing the line sometimes. But if he got one black he dude telling him. I think, he, I, think he, I think he absolutely, I'm not giving him the benefit of that doubt. What he do, what he do now. I think he absolutely knows when he's crossing the line. He know what yeah. he's doing because I'm not stupid. So everybody that's on this type of time, the whole thing is about the conflict for the views. So for him, he's probably analyzing this like, yo, this is, giving me more views is giving me more attention when we coming at it from a certain standpoint which then takes me further to my thing where like i don't give a fuck what that boy think mm -hmm. this look he's a little nigga to me like little yeah, I'm, let, against, he, I'm not saying he, it, i'm not saying it in a disrespectful way i have yeah. nothing to do with homeboy but he has nothing to do with my freedom struggle yeah nothing. i mean shit, I, look, I look at him the same way that that was the thing i was telling i was trying to say like why why are we looking at this guy like he he's this guy is not why, why are we looking at this guy like this? And it's not about what he thinks. I don't want to change how he thinks. He can, okay, think, yeah, yeah. He can think however he wants to think. All yeah. I'm saying is watch your mouth. You can hate the way you just said it. The way you just said it, I full understanding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You like, talk about have, my man, like, watch your mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like we, we have a we have a blessed, we have a blessed culture. We we are our open arm policy, everybody can come in here and get money. All you got to do is not walk all over us. Right, you know what I mean? Right. And it's going to come a time where we're not going to let you do that because right. we're going to start seeing the importance of command and respect because we've been able to do it individually. Right. A motherfucker can't disrespect us individually. We'll bust each other's head all day. Yeah. For whatever reason, commanding it as a culture just hasn't translated yet. You know what I'm saying? But while, while, while we're still working that out, He's playing niggas like a fiddle because he's looking at it like he actually said this out of his mouth to us. Black people don't affect my bottom line. No, absolutely. You shouldn't absolutely. be able to speak like that. Nah, you're right. You're right. You shouldn't be able you to. You know that that's a reality, right? You know that that's a reality. Yeah, but I mean, it's a that's reality. Much, no, 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 no. But that's, that's how much more you should be offended of the pimping that's going on is because of the fact that he recognizes that his audience is a majority white people that are voyeuristic in watching black Trump. Yeah, I mean, well, I think anything that we don't focus our attention on or give our energy to will fail. Anything. Okay. Anything. I don't even think, I don't even think pop is bigger than hip hop, my nigga. I'm not going to even lie to you. I think it's mm. all the farce. I think it's a lot of money being spent to make it appear to be bigger, but you can't think of a whole lot of times where hip hop was able to use pop in a productive way, but you can, you can look at the other way around all day. Justin ain't making nothing but R&B records. Right. Niggas still trying to make pop records because we getting told that urban radio is the chitlin circuit and, and pop, when you go pop, you made it. But right. I personally feel like there is no greater position you can be in this culture than your people loving you. No, Tyler absolutely. Perry is a perfect absolutely. example of that. He make movies about black people for black people and he's a billionaire. Right. Not even in the paradigm of Hollywood. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Boys in the Hood is just Boys in the Hood. You take Cube out of it and put fucking Matthew Broderick in it, then it's ruined. People right, like us saying. to be us. There's something special about us that you can't duplicate. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for whatever reason, we get to a point where we start subscribing to other people's taste level. Our taste called, level is supreme, bro. It's called melanin. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's called melanin. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I hate hearing them records with them big over-the-top singing choruses with them fucking chord progressions, man. I hate yeah, I, well, well, again, again, okay, so let's let's pivot off of off of Homeboy, right? And let's just talk about that, Royce, in terms of what pop has become. Because there are pop records that I love. Masterful, yeah, Bruno Mars. No, 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 even before that, let's, Michael Jackson has a bunch of pop records that I love. Prince has a bunch of pop records that I love, right? Well, Michael yeah. Jackson, Michael Jackson ain't really pop. Michael Jackson is Michael Jackson. You don't think Mike's pop? I, don't, I think Mike's non-binary. So, so, so this, goes, this goes to another argument that me and No ID have, where I say pop is not a genre. It's a position. It's not a genre. I think it's like three different things. I think it's a position. I think it's a, a, an aesthetic, musically. I okay. think there's a such thing as a pop sound. Yes. There's, a, there's, a, there's an aesthetic pop sound that exists that people subscribe to. 
And then there's also pop positioning, like the iHeart Media stage and certain moves. Like if you go get Ariana Grande on a record or Taylor Swift or some shit like that, you're going for it. Now, but 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 Royce, okay, let me let's go through it. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on pop positioning. That's a whole political game mm -hmm. that people got to play. If we look at the history of pop music, if we go through the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, it changes as to what is considered pop. At one time, time Motown was pop music. Mm -hmm. It was the popular music of the day. Mm -hmm. If we go through the 80s, synth pop was like popular music, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we go through the 90s or 2000s, we get into boy bands, we get into, that was pop. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Top of the top, Britney Spears, pop. Shit you was battling against on the charts. You was battling fucking Britney Spears and the Backstreet Boys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In terms of positioning. Mm -hmm. That necessarily is not a genre. That is a position. Genres are things that are based off of culture. Mm -hmm. Country music is based off of a culture. Mm -hmm. Hip hop music is based off of a culture. Mm -hmm. Reggae music is based off of a culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're, these define genres. I'm saying pop is a position because it's like whatever becomes popular. Like, and I'm saying it in that vernacular to be whatever becomes popular mm -hmm. becomes pop music, and that shit can change. That's why it's so fickle. That's why yeah. they're not real fans. Pop is, yeah. doesn't mean that you got real fans. It just means that your shit is popular. Something in culture connected, and you got a big record. It doesn't mean that you have the fan base. Yes, it's called pop. It's just called casual fans. It's just like in boxing. When you have a regular boxing match and then when Floyd come out, he bring out all the people who ain't really yeah. in boxing. They're casual yeah. fans. That's what the big stage is. That's all that is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And pop, like when it's used in that context, that's one thing. But then when you talk about the boy bands and Britney Spears and shit like that, you're talking about people who intentionally put music into people to create people right? For, for a, to achieve a certain thing. Right. But it wasn't necessarily made to exist for long periods of time. It's not. You it's know not. what I'm saying? So that's yeah. why if you're up against them for chart positioning, it really only means something in that moment. Yes, yes. Like Illmatic yes. is just Illmatic, man. Like 20 years of Illmatic, he fucking headlined the Coachella stage and did the whole Illmatic headlining the Coachella stage. Right. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It ain't, it ain't, the pop can't compete with that, bro. No, of course. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Saying? No, no, no. So, so me, me, and, and I'm gonna say no ID. We had this conversation last week. We broke it down to three things: it's pop, it's hits, and it's ghetto shit. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, sir. It's one of them three things, and mm -hmm. the ghetto shit can last. When I say ghetto shit, I mean like thing. I'm, I'm using those vernaculars. On you mean the, you mean the Manny Fresh records when they first came in? I yeah. mean cultural impact. I mean mm -hmm. things that may not have not charted. But they made so much impact, like the Manny Fresh records, like mm -hmm. you know, like I can name a million different things. Those last longer because they meant something to people. Whereas pop is just for that time, and whereas mm -hmm. hit could last forever. Right. What would you consider a hit? Right now, somebody would still hire somebody to come in and sing the song. Everybody in the club get tipsy. Jay Quan. Mm -hmm. He can still get a show with that record. It's a hit. Mm -hmm. Did he have the biggest career of all time? No. Do we look at him as one of the gang? No, no. But he has a hit record. Mm -hmm. Now, does, is his cultural impact super high? No. It was just, it was a moment. Mm -hmm. Did he have a pop record? No. It was a moment, but he got a hit. Mm -hmm. It's yep. a difference with hits. Now, you can be in more than one category at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, um, Akinelli's put it in your mouth. Pause. Is that a hit or is that a cultural moment? It's a hit. Both. It's both. Mm -hmm. He can always go do that. You see what I'm saying? This was you were trying to explain when you had a higher charting of a record that you did with a pop artist versus Boom. Mm -hmm. Boom is a cultural record. Like Shook One's... Cultural uh, record. Um... Feral Munch, uh, uh, the Feral Munch joint. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, put your hands up. Yeah, like fucking, um, dog, um, Zero to Sixty, Drake, fucking, uh, Kendrick, fucking, uh, we gonna be all right. Like, these all records right. are just gonna be here. They don't, they all, just, all right, all right is all, an example of all three. 
And I'll write as an example of all three and when the time is the right time for the record. And when shit that is outside of your, like there's no way that you could tell me that we're going to make this song called New York City and then the Yankees is going to win the fucking thing. And then like everything happened for that record to be mm -hmm. out of this world. With Kendrick's All Right, it's like, yo, it's ghetto. It's a hit. It's cultural. And even after a drop, no one can say, yo, we're about, George Floyd is about to get killed and the world is about to be on protest. And we're going to see, this is going to be the soundtrack to the protest. No one could have predicted that. Mm -hmm. Yep. What about, what about Gin and Juice? Gin and Juice is all three. <laughs> all three. Doggy Style is all three. All three. Perfect. It may be the most perfect example of all three because after The Chronic, it was the most anticipated album. It, it does the first week numbers, all that bullshit that people want to bring up, but it also had the elevation of Dr. Dre production-wise. It had the, the, the mixture of Snoop doing um, really good raps that are on production that leads to hit records. Mm -hmm. With Dr. Dre in the most confident after leaving his shit. What about Miss Jackson? I'm always conflicted with Outkast. Why is that? Let me, let me tell you why. AT Aliens is my favorite album. The success comes and the fans, and when I say fans, yes, were there people like me in 96 who got the promo and loved Andre and realized he was one of the greatest niggas ever? Yes. But the general fan base did not come until the hits, until Equimini, until that type of shit. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Miss Jackson, Miss Jackson is definitely a hit. You can't take that away. It's culturally relevant because younger niggas feel like that that was their time period. Not for me personally. Equimini, mm -hmm. I mean, AT Aliens was my shit. Mm -hmm. That's when I felt like they was in their best as a team. And production wise, with them being in the dungeon and, and dungeon family. After they moved to like them producing the albums themselves, I get what they was doing, but nothing to me is close to AT Aliens. Them niggas are something. Them, no, niggas, them, are something. Them, them niggas are special. Them niggas oh, I got special. I got one for you, bro. Can't tell me nothing. Kanye. Mm. Why is that song so important, man? What what the fuck is it about it, man? It just feel right all the time. Every it's what he's saying. Time. It's what he's saying that every person it wants to be on that vibe of you can't tell me nothing like I'm going to my shit. But it, as much as this big in the pop realm, it is the Jeezy ad libs that ground it to the street. Man, that shit is. Remember where Jeezy was at at that time? Yeah, that song it's is the Jeezy ad libs that ground it to the street. That song is fucking immaculate, bro. Immaculate. Now, I will tell you this about Kanye. I mean it from, from this standpoint of a lot of people would just make a record and that night they like, yo, that's it. Mix the record, put it out. Kanye goes months thinking, mm -hmm. listening. Is it a way I could do this better? Should I get real strings instead of this string patch? I want to go to Abbey Road to do the fucking choir and should I get the Harlem Boys choir on this record? And that, you know, like... I've heard from the standpoint of him stealing my Lauryn Hill CD in baseline, go make All Falls Down, come back, play it for us. This is when he first got the niggas in the studio to be like, yo, he got something. He's more than just the beat maker. Mm -hmm. Right? That's when Hop, that's when Hop started paying attention. Me more than and, and again, people always I'm trying to bring some like some maturity to these conversations because people that wasn't there always have a conversation about what the fuck happened and you wasn't there. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like niggas was shitting on Kanye. Right. It wasn't like, yo, get out of here with the raps. It's your best beat maker, him and Just Blaze and Bink. It's three <laughs> of them niggas. But you don't, you don't want him to be more than that because you can't walk and no, shoot No, no, it's not that I don't time. want him to be more than that. It's like <laughs> niggas who came in here spitting a rap to me when I'm asking you to give me three beats right, for Bean's right. album. Right. I'm not looking for you to do that right now. I'm looking for you to supply me with the beats for Beans out. Mm -hmm. That's why it wasn't shitting on Ye. It was just like, yo, you do this part really well. Mm -hmm. Come back to me with that. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm making a point to say that Ye goes over his music. He 
refines it over time. So there's probably 12 versions of a Kanye song. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Taking yep. that time to go like, yo, what's different? What can I make better? This is going to be my representation of me that lives forever in history. Sade album lived forever in history. A Bob mm -hmm. Marley album lives forever in history. Like, we got to put rap on that same level and stop just being like, yeah, I'm throwing out the internet freestyle. Right. Yeah. Facts. I mean, shit, Kanye, is he's a producer. He's a producer first. He's a producer first. So it's like... I think that's his strength. That's his, as, much as, as much as people want to take away from the lyrical, like, yeah, if you compare Kanye to you on a lyrical standpoint, you know what I mean? There's no comparison. But if you say, like, him as a total package of being able to... It's like M when M produces for himself. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, there's a difference of M producing for himself. The Kanye. records come out different when he's producing for himself. It's more personal. Kanye, it was a point in time where he knew exactly when to go up, when yes. to go down. When to, he yes. just knew. He just knew where everything should be. Like, can't tell me nothing. There's plenty of things he could have did to that. He could have brought the whole bells and whistles to that shit, man. But it's the simplicity of it that's just perfect, man. Like, right. everything, everything there is just perfect. All the spacing in the verses... You know, he didn't go too crazy on the verses, but it's just like, it's the right verses. Yeah. You know, like Dr. Dre's G thing verse. You believe in the perfect verse? I don't believe the verse could have been better. It's just the verse for the song. It's the right verse. It is what it is at the given time that gave us the feeling. So, so it's perfect for the moment. When people go back and be like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it other than like, niggas want to go back and fix their mistakes in life, right? You'd be like, yeah. yo, I wish I could go back and fix my mistake. But if you fix the mistake, you're not the same you that you are now. Mm. The mistake is what made you you now in 2021. So it may be a totally different Royce the Five Nine if you go back and fix all the mistakes. The mistakes got you to this point. Mm -hmm. That's part of the thing that you got to, that's part of my thing that I'm trying to accept where I'm like, damn, I wish I could go back and fix this. But it's like, that's what got you here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I, I come to the realization that people, People don't like squeaky clean perfection, bro. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. You know, Royce, perfection is boring. Mm hmm It's boring. Perfection is fucking boring. And, and again, I'm not trying to nerd out, but this is just my Star Trek shit. Like, I'm a Star mm -hmm. Trek fanatic, my nigga, like a fanatic. So it's this shit called the Q Continuum in Star Trek, right? Mm hmm Niggas that done been through space and time, they've been to the beginning of time, to the end of time, they've seen it all, right? They end up becoming so lazy that when Picard goes to see them, they just sitting. It's like the old Wild West. It's tumbleweeds and shit rolling down the um the street. They just sitting, you know what I mean, on the porch. And when Picard's like, "What's wrong with them?" The Q look at him and be like, "They done seen it all." Mm. There's no motivation to become better because they have reached perfection. Perfection is fucking boring. Nobody likes perfection. It got to be something off. No major artist that we like is normal. It's something off about them. That's what makes them special. Mm -hmm. It's something weird about this dude. It's something different. It's something off. It's something... That's what make them an artist. That's what make them special. Otherwise, you're just a normal dude. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'd be like, yo, that's my dude down the hall from my dorm that plays basketball and rap really good. I wish we, I wish we wouldn't, have, as a coach, have been so critical of Kanye, man. We started to make him second-guess himself. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, and again, I'm very careful because I don't oversell shit. I, I haven't been around Kanye since, like, Watch the Throne. I know the early Kanye, or like niggas say, the old Kanye. Right? <laughs> like they say mm -hmm. that. I know that. So I, I can't give a serious critique of someone who I, who I could possibly talk to on the phone and understand they like if I haven't been in tune with them for years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, if you ain't talked to me in the last five, ten years, you don't really know me. When you, when you, when you, the older you get as an artist, the more you think anyway, just as a man, just as a person, you think more. You know right. what I mean? So he's automatically going to start thinking more than he would have. But he's such, he's so under scrutiny and all of the things that he did is like thrown back in his face so much I could tell from afar just when he started just kind of second guessing himself and not wanting to like being worried about things like he didn't used to be worried about like pissing people off and shit like that to me you know, that's every like, artist gotta have a fucking factor man you gotta have i say this all the time 
you hitting all my points, Royce. You gotta have a fuck it factor. And that's I wish, hard I wish I wish Kanye, Lauren Hill, Andre three thousand had the fuck it factor. Yeah, just Andre three thousand. I don't give a fuck what people think. Just fuck it. Just put it out. That that interview Andre three thousand did with Rick Rubin, man, it broke my fucking heart, man. Because I was like, we lost Dre. We lost Andre because now he's thinking about. What I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know if we lost him yet. Well, I hope not. Cause he sound like he sound like he was just like fuck it. Royce, my fault. I was trying to uh, uh, decline a phone call and shit hit the wrong button. My fault. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah, that that fuck it factor is hard to hang on to. No, no, but make your make your point, Royce, because you're making an interesting point. What, what yeah, why do you I, think we lost Drake? Because I don't think we lost him. I just think that I think the music has moved to a position where he's like, okay, what do I put out? But in any given moment, I feel like Andre Three Thousand could come back and smack us with a with a classic. I and hope so. I hope no, but so. tell me, tell me, tell Bill, tell me why you. I just, I, I just kind of felt like that he was just kind of saying like, "Shit, man, I, it, it's not happening right now." You know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking at what's going on out there, and I don't really know, you know, like where I fit in. I'm listening to this, I'm listening to that, and I'm thinking to myself like, "Bro, none of these thought processes and like, none of these thought directions got you to where you are." You know what I'm saying? Like, you never, you didn't get to greatness thinking this way. You know what I mean? Like, at what point did you start caring about what we think? Like, we didn't even we didn't even realize how much we needed you until you made us. You made us accept you. I didn't want to like, hey, y'all, that ain't my type of shit. I love that fucking song. That nigga's just the truth. You know what I mean? He made you choose. You know what I mean? So it was just like, <clears throat> back when they was making all of that kind of music, man, hip-hop wasn't in that space, man. That whole, the South got something to say. It was like, well, you, my brother, ain't really speaking for the whole South because it ain't never been nothing like y'all, and it ain't probably never gonna be nothing like y'all. But they are, but they, but but it was an interesting perspective of my Southern cats that were of a certain thinking standpoint. I think Dre represented that common man of the South. Where I'm saying it from this standpoint, us that are in the North, right? I'm in Jersey, you in Detroit, right? And I'm back and forth, Jersey, New York, every day. When we in a city like that. You can't just lay in the grass and like look at the air and observe nature and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. when, when he when he has the time to think, like our thing is so we just moving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So so him giving that perspective of a thinking man coming from the south, I think I had never seen that before. So I think he does. I came into this world high as a bird from secondhand cocaine powder. I know it sounds absurd. I never chewed it, but it's in my veins. While the rest of the country bunches off bridges without no snapback and bitches, they say they need that to shake their fannies in these ass clubs. They go the other route, turn each other out, burn each other out. Where they born a fine nigga like me can't even get no back rub these days. And they blink on their part. Like, that type of shit was touching to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he reaching a level of, of everyday common man shit. And I feel like him, at his age, with children, his experience, he could hit us with everyday common man shit and make it immaculate, especially, especially when he was on that run. Boys. Remember when he was like, yo, I'm going to just fuck with all the like Atlanta instrumentals, right? He did the uh, mm -hmm. T-shirt joint and he did yep. like he was just fucking with whatever was coming out of Atlanta hot. Yep. You remember when you remember when he was young and he um he said that he didn't want to be rapping past 30? I get that. But you might you might think different at 40. <clears throat> Yeah, that's why we should never make those kind of announcements. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jay, Jay Z retired on the Black Album. Yeah, we should never do that. We should <laughs> never do that. That's a that's a no no. You know what I mean? Right. Somebody asked me like, "Man, is you just gonna be rapping forever?" I said, "I know I'm not gonna be rapping forever, but I came up with an answer. I'm a rap as long as I feel like my raps is the most important thing that I can contribute to the culture." Yeah, but, but but okay, okay, stop, boys, stop. I watched James Brown do it to death. I watched Michael Jackson do it to death. My mother and father used to take me to go see Frankie Beverly and Maze and, you know what I mean, shit like the Earth, Wind & Fire at their height. You're trying to tell me that as a fan of voice, that if I'm 60 years old, I'm not going to get a Vegas residency of me, want, me and 300 niggas who want to see you at that time, nigga, and Vegas is willing to pay for it? I want what why rob me of that? I want to hear those bars. Oh no, I don't I don't I definitely don't plan on robbing anybody of anything. I, th I it's going to be more of a thing where if I'm not giving you raps, it's going to be something else that I'm doing that's more that's more 
important to the culture than my raps are at that time. I like, do you, think, do you think Hov's raps are the most important thing that he can give us right now? No, 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 I'm not saying that. What I'm saying no, is... I know, I you, no, 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 but let me, let me build on the argument. It's not about, is that the most important thing or the most relevant thing that you did in your life? What I'm saying is I actually really love your raps and I want to hear them for the rest of my life. They're actually an example of things that I give to other people to say these are really good raps. Yeah. Thanks. So I want it, me personally, do I want to hear Hove, you, Black Thought, until I die? Yes. The same way that I went and watched Max Roach play until he, like, I watched Max Roach when I was in, in, in 93. It's not the height of his shit, but I'm like, yo, I got to see Max Roach play live for two hours. This man had a kick, a snare, and a high head on stage, and he entertained me for two hours. And I'm like, I get it why he's the shit in the jazz world. I get it. As long as, as long as Hove don't let the Rock Nation thing waver. No, 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 no. That's different. That's us as businessmen. That's us as showing you where this can go. That's saying, yo, I'm not just putting me on. I'm putting everybody on. I'm actually going to run a business. And, and you know, like, that's a separate side thing. We that's talk important. about these rats. Yeah, that shit is important, though. No, no, of course. Of course. I'm not. No, no. Don't, don't get it twisted. And, and, and if I made that unclear... Don't get it twisted. The things outside of just rapping are very important. Again, like, I, like we were talking about before, for the younger people to have something to aspire to, for people to see what it really is. For a, a kid that grew up in Marcy Projects to now have a billion dollars and to understand all the shit that you're talking about. There's no, there's no other person on the planet that knows all the battle rappers and has a billion dollars. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. That's ridiculous. That's that's that's. Think about what I'm trying to say there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's not the point. The point is, I actually happen to like his raps a lot, mm -hmm. the same way I like your raps a lot, and the and the beat production and the selection, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. Of all things that you ever put out, Book of Ryan is probably my favorite one, and it, because it's so personal. Mm hmm. That's not to take away from all of the other shit you did. I want to hear all of that in the show. But to answer your question of should you be doing this at 60 years old, you goddamn right you should be doing it at 60 years old. Yeah, if I if I if I'm if I'm feeling it, I'm definitely gonna be doing it. I'm definitely gonna be doing it. But I never want to be that dude that's forcing forcing my raps on everybody. Y'all gonna get these bars. No, I get that. Lyrical nine six and nine six and deep and limits and bob and means. That's when niggas start that's when niggas start fucking digressing. You be like, you know, you know, we the last ones to know, man. We always the last ones to know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, I, I'm making it a point, though, Royce, because I'm like, enough niggas don't say this shit to y'all of like, no, fuck that. You don't have to be pandering to young kids. You don't have to be against them. You can go and do every other fucking thing that you want to do in your life in terms of like building this and building that and building whatever. But there are some of us that love the bars. And that's who I'm, I'm speaking very specifically to a very unique, you know what I'm saying? Demographic. And there are some of us who actually fucking listen and who get it and who break shit down and be like, yo, did you hear when he said this and that? And there's barbershop discussion about it. And there's barbershop arguments. And there's like, people have staked their, you know what I mean? Niggas have staked their like, their argument on you in a barbershop in Sandusky, Ohio. Mm. Some place we ain't never fucking thought. You know, like think about that for a second. Yeah, that dude wants to come. Yo, Grateful Dead had people coming to their shit until Homeboy died. Period. Mm hmm. Hip hop gonna be in that space for sure. Niggas is gonna be super old on the stage. Rock stars. But Marshall will be able to perform forever. If you do it the correct way, it'll look like Ron Isley and not like the nigga fell off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It'll look like Ron Isley when he was on the verses. Like, young girls is like, oh, I might get a, you know what I mean? I might get an old head. I like the like, beard. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he was looking right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It, 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 not, not to digress, but that's the point. I'm, make, I'm really making a point about um, the poetry. Mm -hmm. And I'm really making a point about, like, my OGs is like a Mary Baraka and where, and where we hold him in the pantheon of poets and the mm. people who were with the people and at the same time of being a poet, being someone who went to Mittens and seeing the birth of Bebop. So he's watching Bebop being created on a stage. They 
knew the moments was happening. So to me, the same thing comes to New York and it's just like, yo, it's Lyricist Lounge. And my assistant, Kamel, who's from Abu Dhabi, goes to D-Dot and was like, yo, it was this white boy at the Lyricist Lounge that just destroyed shit. D-Dot then goes, yo, how much you want? Five Ds, okay, whatever it is, da -da -da -da. put him on the Mad Rapper album. That's the first time I ever touched M vocals. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Those yeah. moments are moments, them moments mean shit to us. The moments mean shit to us. So it's not like you are lesser than a John Coltrane. Man, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy every time I talk to Tariq and he's so inspired to write raps. Yo. Because I'm like, bro, where is it coming from? He doesn't Last time stop. I spoke to him, he was talking about like some shit that he was reading, saying he was about to step it up because he see niggas is trying to be competitive. I'm like, oh man, I'm happy. I'm happy that you intentional about that, but I'm scared at what you about to do. Royce. Royce, as much as I, like, I can't, one of my things as an engineer is I don't talk about what the fuck happened. Everybody should be scared. Oh, yeah, he sent, he sent me some of that stuff. Oh, my God. I'm afraid of what he sent me, so I, I, already, I can already imagine what you probably got. Now, he's one of the... What's going on in the area rap? Whereas, whereas like, I look at, I look at him as a griot mm -hmm. I look at most as like a shaman mm -hmm. I look at you as the dude I look at you as the the general not even the general the 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 how do I say it the battalion leader who actually runs with the niggas you know you got coaches that be on a bike when you play I don't know if y'all niggas play basketball but like a coach that be on the bike while you running the two miles before practice or the coach that run the two miles with you yeah, thank God I it's ain't had difference. that coach to be on the bike. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. So I look at you as that, like, but there's a there's a level of you being on the street level that they don't have. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it, it, that's how that's how different because there's a level of like, where's where's like everybody can rhyme really good, but it's just perspective on who the person is. Mm -hmm. So most is going to give us a little bit more shaman boogeyman shit. Yeah. And he's going to sing. He's an icon, man. And he's gonna sing. Whereas he's Black like, Thought is gonna give us them razor sharp everyday descriptions of what the hell is going on. Like this nigga, this nigga said, uh, what the fuck? It was the Ike Anime's verse where he said, uh uh, universe, you owe me one solid. My homie Gonzalez, he only knew gun violence on a corner where they probably only 21 savage, catch two in your chavez, young Caesar, Chavez, division one. What this nigga said. He's talking to the universe, and he's saying, universe, you owe me a favor. You owe me a solid. That's the solid is the word we used to use back in the day for favor. You owe me a favor. That means I've been a stand-up square nigga. I've been straight. I've been on my dean. I did everything right. And the thing that he prays for is not for himself. He prays for the young nigga. This is my prayer. He prays for this nigga named Gonzalez. Mm-mm. Universe, you owe me one salad. My homie Gonzalez, he only know gun violence. On the corner where they probably only 21 Savage. Catch two in your cabbage. Young Caesar Chavez. The young Caesar Chavez. Division one. Mm -hmm. That means these the best young niggas playing the game. Mm -hmm. they play this, this, is, this is the best 18 and 19 year old niggas I could find in the country. But we talking about the murder game. And it's, and, and it's sylla syllabalistically perfect. Yo, wait a minute, where we get our rhythm from? Continuum. Still swinging like a pendulum. <sighs> wait a minute. Where do we get our rhythm from? From the continuum. <laughs> the millions of years before you, the millions of years after you, it's still swing. At time, keep going. Still swinging like a pendulum. Yo, he's killing them shit. He's different. He different. He different. I don't even know. I don't even... That nigga, that nigga, he, he, he the perfect MC. Him and Jay-Z, they the perfect MCs. You think so? I mean, I can't think of nothing. I can't think of no flaws, bro. So where do you rank, where do you rank, like, the, the, it's a, again, this is another conversation me and my dad be having, right, where my, my father's like, my, it's weird to have 
a 70 year old man argue poor righteous teachers right like my mm -hmm. father loves four fucking poor righteous teachers he loves them mm -hmm. it, it could be some jersey shit it could be that <laughs> you know what i'm saying like but where do you put and i'm not even saying him i'm saying like where do you put the canes the rockems the kooji raps where do you put them in terms of perfection or just like height compared to a black to rank i tend to rank to people Jay like mm, it's hard to compare it's hard to compare them because it's usually easier for me to compare niggas to the air that they kind of represent that they embody so it's easier think, for me to do that talk, no no but, but well, i hate to keep cutting you off because i want you to build but again, this, this relates to basketball. So are we talking eras? Because one of the things my father brings up is when he's talking old school basketball, he always makes a point to be like, and remember, these people's averages are without a three-point line. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, think all things, so I think all yeah. I think all things should be considered going back, but I think all things should be considered going forward as well. So like, I'm not one of those guys that, that talks about the way that Kane and, and, and Coogee Rap kind of elevated Rakim kind of elevated the syllable, the syllable game, but then once Pun and Marshall and fucking Thought and, and Nas and all them niggas got it, they took it somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's certain areas that I can't even like compare them because it's well, a way well, more Would technical. Michael Jordan be Michael Jordan if Dr. J didn't come along to, ele like, to elevate no. the game to that point? No. Okay. No. No. Okay. But I do think that Michael Jordan took it somewhere to where everybody might... Nah, couldn't have done talk it. about it's Dr. Dilla. J. It's Dilla. It's it's where Dilla could do Pete Rock. He could do Primo. He could do, but they can't do it. And there's no disrespect to Primo, and D they'll tell you, he took the level of where they was at and elevated. He took it. He took it. He took it. Jay Z took. Jay Z took it. What up, Moo? What's up with him? What up, Moo? What's the Moo? deal? What's no, the deal? No, Hold on. Let's let let let's state this number one. Let's state this number one. I'm stating this for facts. Mook is the goal of battle rap. Mm -hmm. Free Any day. nigga that want to argue me that I got facts that's unbiased and we gonna, gonna go battle by that. battle. But this in my opinion, I don't, not think gonna argue that, bro. I don't think that could be argued, bro. Yo, we not gonna argue that. <laughs> yo, you know this, my brother, this king, peace king, this peace king, 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 this my go. <laughs> oh, yo, so uh, I'm sorry, yo, thank you too, um, go like um. Uh, I'm, I can catch me up. Where, where we at with it? No, no, no. The whole thing, Mook, Mook. We were talking. We were talking a whole bunch of other shit. But the shit that I was saying, number one on the topic was, I, I'm gonna break it down for you real quick. I said the niggas that's real lyrical that write songs, they don't understand what it feels like to stand on that stage and and to have to perform in a battle, right? Right. So, right. Number one, you can write really good raps, but do you know how to pause? Do you know how to work the crowd? Do you know when your lines hit and when your lines don't hit? Can you go through errors? Can you go through different schemes? Can you go through all of that? And I said, on the other side, some of some of my best battle rappers don't understand what it is to actually write a song. So I said, I'm, I'm in the middle because I think it's things on both sides that people can learn from. But I think the MCs that write records Got to learn how to perform if they want. I'm gonna tell you. Better. I'm gonna tell you this though. We just, we just, uh, we me, me, Lux and Rex. We just started a podcast. Uh, today we shot our first episode, right? Um, and that was actually, um, one of the topics that we that we discussed. And to to your point, go out. Uh, I I disagree with that because okay, I feel as if see when when you when you say. <laughs> Battle rap say we all came in this shit, battle rappers. Everybody. We all came in it battle rappers, but there wasn't a, a title as a battle rapper, but niggas got signed off of, off of battling. Yeah, but, but let, me, right? let me let me ask you a question. Mo, 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 I, I beg I beg everything in question so so that, that we can understand each other, right? Okay. Now let me ask you this question. Do you feel as though the battle rap uh, a stage is the same way as you and Jay Mills standing outside in Harlem? It's a totally different thing to well, me now in well, terms of the presentation. Well, I, I was actually, well, no, I, to answer that question, no, it, it isn't. It, it evolved. Um, but as anything, as anything would, 
but I, you know, I think I also, but also the piggyback though off of that, I don't feel like battle rapper now want to care about making music because no, absolutely not. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm absolutely. only going by from the uh, your previous uh, statement. I'm only going by in the past, and the reason I say I disagreed is because it. A lot of people didn't know what it was to make records, but that's why you had A and R's back then that would know the talent. They would sign them, and they would know to tell them, "You can't be rapping on this beat. This ain't the beat for you to rap on. You don't sound. You sound good like this." And they developed them, so they developed the 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 uh the talent into being able to convert it to make music. To whereas you know later on now is you know anybody can just have an opinion, do anything. It's no. But I feel like, and this is how I give it up, I felt like, you know, especially in the time when me and Lux was in the beginning, I felt like niggas had to say niggas couldn't do something. Because a lot of niggas that might have had good music or knew how to rap on beats, but a lot of them niggas didn't know how to battle rap. And they watched it, but the fact, but they couldn't do it. And if they right. couldn't do it, they got, they not gonna give, they not going to give us everything. They're not going to say they could battle rap and make songs, so they're going to say, but them niggas can't make music. Like, so they're going to give you one, but they're not going to give you both. And that's how right. I always felt. And battle rap used to be like a, a taboo thing. Everybody used to watch it, but never used to want to give it no props in the open. You know what I'm right. saying? And I, I always felt like that wasn't fair. But, you know, so the music in, I just feel like, you know, that's whatever you feel like, because if you can rap, The rapper and make him make a hit record. I believe you could, and we know the politics behind that aspect of it. What's the politics? As what? As far as hit records, and hit shit? records from battle rappers. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about hit hit records. Period. For anybody, mm -hmm. like right. if if a nigga really wanted to make somebody have a hit record, there's people that know how to do it. They could, could we could grab one of these niggas right here up the street. And make them have a hit record if they wanted to, if we wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah, we got damn right earlier. Huh? <laughs> we touched on this earlier. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, we we know that part. Here's my part, cause I'm I'm telling Royce, here's the shit I'm talking. About. So Royce, you ain't tell him Google about none of this. Which part? A nigga, about the the shit that's happening here with the uh, with the uh, Lupe and 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 shit like that, and you. And, and everybody with the rappers. I mean, he been following everything. He know what's going on. I, mean, I know what's going on. So, so let me ask. Let me ask it, Mook. Let me ask this because it's two well. I have some news. I have news. But go ahead. Okay, but it's two perspectives. It's two perspectives. When somebody say, "Yo, I'll burn you. I'm better than you." What what stage are we talking about? Because if we're talking about the battle rap stage, I'm making a point that your no, I'm lyric about is rapping. Rapping. Oh, just period. rapping. Period. Just yeah. rapping. Period. Yeah, rapping. Nigga, I'm better than you. I'm nicer than you. Like and that's where I'm, I need. I want to insert myself, cause I I know how to rap on any arena. Period. You put right. me on a, on a, in a radio station and we put beats on and we rapping on those and we just gotta dance and see and see who gonna catch what's so, going so on. Let me let me no 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 but, but let me let me ask you a question, Mook, because you you going to a specific thing and what I'm saying is there's an arena to where yo if a nigga tell me yo. Three niggas is going to flex, and Murder Mook is one of them. They're going to put on the beat, and they just going to rap. I'm going to bet my money that Murder Mook is going to destroy all them niggas. But if a nigga say to me, yo, we taking our, our three latest singles up to flex, and we're going to see what the audience feels as though is the best record, then some poop butt nigga could just jump in with a good hook and have the best record. Right, but That's we're not talking about thing that. Than who raps the best. No, we're talking about who rap the best. That, yeah, I don't think, I don't think nobody got the best I, record. I don't we think don't. nobody. I don't think nobody moved to go close to a place where it's like who's the best artist. I think everybody's still kind of like on some rap. I think everybody's still kind of like intentional. So, so, then, so then we get rap. we get to that point where I'm asking you, what do you respect? Because it's a lot of. I go back to my original point. It's a lot of niggas who got great bars and they multiple syllable rhymes is incredible and all that shit, but they not saying nothing. Niggas don't. Feel niggas don't make I sense when he rap. I agree. Yeah, well, they they multi syllable, they multi syllable rhymes ain't incredible. Hold on one second. Hold on, it's it's. I, that's two different parts though. 
That's that's my point, Mook. That's what I'm asking you. So, 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 so look, no, and, and Mook, and Mook, right, whip that up so you can expand on good. it. I really want to hear your viewpoint. The fact that the fact that Royce said they multi-syllable rhymes aren't in, aren't incredible. I, you you understand what he's saying by saying that? It's like if it's incredible, then what makes it incredible is making it relatable too. Like, right. That's when you incredible. That's when you can be incredible when you could do those patterns, whatever. And still be relatable, and people still could feel you. It's a lot of niggas that do that shit, but I don't feel them. It just feel like, ah, right, you rap, you rapping really well. Like you, you, you just rapping really well, words and shit. But right. at the end of the day, what are you saying to me, or right. what? What do I get from you? You know what I'm saying? I don't learn nothing from you. I don't get no feel from you. Like you know, God bless the dead. Like you know, the, one of the ghosts, DMX. DMX wasn't a multi-syllable nigga at all. But you felt him. Like you he said shit that you felt that and, and it was hard. It was hard. Like you couldn't deny it. It's it's a bunch of different ways to present the dish. I just feel I feel as though, you know, it the incredible what makes it incredible is if you could do it, period. Now, can I get to what I wanted to you hear me? Who want to smoke? Lupe, Lupe, Lux called Lupe. And he said, he want to smoke. He not dug in no wreck. Let, he said, set it up. Let's get it. He he said, he better than you. Set what up? He said, whatever. To set whatever up. What we, no, no, no. What we, talk, we talking URL or what we talking? What we talk, we, we say set said, it up. Yo, what we talking? Yo, Lux. 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 <laughs> Lux. Come here, Lux. Lux. Come here. Because I don't want to misquote the man. So this is the guy that spoke to him. Lupe, say, beloved, beloved. beloved. What did he say? <laughs> what's, what's up, y'all? What's up, beloved? No, no what, beloved, beloved, beloved. 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 This is what we're saying. When he says that, that enough, what Wait, is that? Before, before, before I let Love say, I said Lupe don't got nothing for Royce. That's a lot. Royce will dog walk Lupe That's a lot. in any arena to me, period. He don't got nothing for him. Nothing, Yo, bro. Move, nothing. move, nothing. Move, move. You sleeping? You sleeping on the boy? You sleeping no, no, on no, him. that no. boy? Nice. That don't mean I'm sleeping on him, at all. That don't mean I'm said he whack. He don't got nothing for Royce though. He not as he can't fuck with Royce. He a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If it's another nigga, then it could it'll be different. But I'm talking about he can't fuck with Royce. Oh, you shit me! Don't pull up on me with bags and shit, man. I get nervous. What's up? <laughs> Yo, what's up, nigga? No, 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 no. Move, he move. can't. He can't move. fuck with Royce. Let me. 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 Let me explain to you what Lupe be doing, because if you look at all the joints, he be, be like, y'all, the worst nigga in the world. Say, niggas that do, and you don't like. Lupe be doing all kind of words and doing shit, and I don't know. I don't feel none of that shit. I don't feel mm. it. That's <laughs> not me. I don't feel it. And that could just be me. I'm not. That's not my cup of tea. Hey, but yo, let Lux, Lu Lux think Lu Lupe will win. So here. That's a fact. I No, listen. I say this. If I walk with Lou. Stop all of this if you Listen, walk with man, a nigga, Listen, man, because the look, cause you, one thing for sure. Tell him what so Lupe and, said. Boys got experience. Tell him what Lupe, Lupe said. Lupe say, shut it up. That's it. Shut it up. What you, what you walking with him supposed to do? Up. When we, hold on, hold on. What hold you on. walking with him supposed to do, beloved? Nah, J, come on, man. Listen, at, fight is fight. But at the same time, they all got coaches and different things that just make... Give him a little bit of little tutelage as to what to look for round for no. round or different Wait, things. Did he say no, God, is, God, God. Let me talk. All I want to do let is ask you a question. Some, some, let, me some... ask you, let me ask you a question. Love it, beloved. This is one of the you can't, get in, there, you can't get in there and fight for him, beloved. Boy's got the tutelage. Boy's, Boy's got experience, is what I'm saying. Bro, we talking about. All right, so let them rap on, on, on beats. Let them go on the radio, rap some on nah, beats. Nah, we want to do We talk about URL, I'm... nigga. We talk about URL, the way to battle. Right, right. right. We talking about battling, man. We talking about the forum and, and, and how we give it up. That makes a whole difference. The, ba the battle rap culture has set its own forum to where niggas got to come into that shit. So That's we talking about a battle rap forum. We talking yeah, about say URL. You say this? And, and what I'm saying is. I mean, what, this, did he say it to you? Go ahead, go ahead. He said it to me. Did he say like it could be said, or he told you? As far as what? Like, did he say, "Yeah, nigga, let everybody know I, I said it." Why? You, why why are you gonna stand on that? Well, listen. I mean, I don't know. I just asked. Oh, all right. Well, no, I'm saying, as far as what we talked about and what we talked about earlier on the show, you know what I mean? Because we, we we doing this cast, we doing this podcast. You know what I'm saying? When I talked to him, talk to him about what we was talking about, 
He was like, oh, okay, set it up. So we going, you know what I mean? We going to chop it up some more with him because we had Royce on the show, boo, you know what I'm saying? We had him talking. Yeah. We was talking a little bit about it. And I and I dropped it in Lou Drink. Like, yo, listen, this is what's going on. But he been knew what was going on. That's why. Okay, so but, I, I but, didn't but look, but look, beloved, beloved, when you say set it up, I don't know Beasley, I don't know Smack. Y'all niggas do. The setup is, is 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 it gonna be on URL? Is we gonna do this in the forum that we used to seeing and niggas gotta get step up on here. stage for them for them for that Once amount you of time? Get him up here. Listen, 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 beloved, beloved, because because you're missing the point of what I was saying before. What I was saying is that a lot of MCs now that have good lyrics have never been in that format. Right, and that's what I'm saying. To understand when to pause, to understand Yo, when a line hit, to right. read the Yo, crowd, bro. to Hold have on. everything that come along with standing on that stage versus the old way it used to be. And I brought up a point of like, like say Mook when he on in Harlem and we watch the old shit, right. that's different than the way it's presented now. Truth, yup, that's a fact. That's why I said I want to walk with him. You know what I mean? And it, I'm listen. I'm not. And, 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 and I'm getting. I'm getting straight to the point. Royce is like walk with who, nigga? I'm solidified to the point where I don't need none of y'all niggas to walk with me. I'm that nigga. Nah, he wasn't saying. saying. <laughs> he wasn't saying. He wasn't saying walk with me. He was saying walk with Lou. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Saying, I was, I was saying, saying. I was saying, beloved can't get in there and fight for him, so it don't matter. Yeah, I I understand Royce cloth. You know what I'm saying? Royce Royce cut from the same Royce. He from it. You know what I mean? I'm just saying lyrically. My man, my man, you know his acumen is up, and I'm saying if if I just had to give him a little bit of tools as as far as how it go, that don't take nothing away from how he gonna rhyme, he gonna rap his raps. Giving niggas tutelage, listen, yeah. give Royce that extra tutelage. Give that Royce nigga extra love. Tutelage. Hey, look. And listen, I can't, hey, look. I can't fight for him. I can't write him. Hey, look, yo, look, get Lupe up here. How about that? Hey, beloved. Right hey, Lux. Don't you call your man? He hey, left. I Lux. told that nigga grab to get Lux, him. Move. Hold on, Lux, 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 here. Royce, no, Royce, Royce, he want to tell you, he want to say something to you. I don't get my phone. Yeah, yeah. Yo. I grab it for you. Nothing, nothing. You don't really know who I am, do you, Lux? <laughs> say it again, say it again. You don't really know who I am, do you? You're in the black car. Say it again. Huh? I you don't really know who I am. You don't really know who I am. No, nah, I know, Royce, you know I know how you give it up. Nah, you don't, be, you, don't, you don't be listening, man. You probably listen to a couple Cut it out. Your penmanship is, is, is up, bro. We understand that, but we, they ain't going to be on here acting like Lou, penmanship ain't what it is. This shit is no, up. No, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that at all. Can't, can't do, do that. that at all. But if we talking about, if we talking about something really specific, Lou, that ain't, Lou, that ain't Lou's thing, man. He's not, he's not, that he ain't that kind of rapper. He ain't, well, that ain't the thing. Well, I listen, man. He a great, he one of our greats and he's amazing at doing a lot of things. Being a killer is not something that he can do with me. Mm. Well, listen, not. hey, man. Well, he tends to believe he can. So, I mean, I, I mean, all... listen, listen. All of you niggas can come to Detroit. We can get on songs. Oh, oh. we could get, oh. we could get, we could get, we could get. Cause you keep talking like you, you going, you going coaching. You could get in there too, man. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I you love know, it. I love, I love it. it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. 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 I don't. Okay. I don't I, I don't fear y'all okay. great niggas, man. I don't I love fear y'all. Give my phone, give my phone. Black, get the phone, get the phone, get the phone. I love it. Yeah, that's healthy. That's how that's healthy. You hear me? Come on, man. <laughs> we going I'm to the What's it in the What's going on? Huh? Yeah, now nah, he's gonna get it's the, all, it's it's all, the phone right now. It's all fine and dandy till you till you bring that other layer. I'm dragging you niggas to the deep waters, man. This is another Ooh. level. I love Yo, it. Your voice is I done. Love it. I love I it. Yo, bro, listen, yeah. Yo, he about to, he about to call him. That's your man, right? <laughs> phone right now. Get your man on the, my man, my man already here, man. I don't even gonna lie, man. My man been, yo, look. Go, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm a nigga that I can't, I'm a very passionate individual about MCing and rap, like, period. Right. And when right. we talk about, you know, and Lupe threw me off when he said that nigga that this Royce was the best nigga in the world. That nigga is garbage, man. Who, who, who? That nigga's dirt. I don't know some nigga that this Royce named Arthur or something. I don't know the nigga named Anthem Ash. Lupe know the nigga. I missed that one. I missed that one. I don't, so, I don't know. I don't, I don't so really take kindly to niggas dissing Royce. I don't oh, his name is like Cyrus like, or so Cyrus or something. So. That Cyrus might be different for me. <laughs> his name's Cyrus. Yeah, but yeah, Lupe said he's the it best. It wasn't personal. It was like, um, them niggas be blindfolding themselves doing pull-ups while they rapping and shit. They like they like, uh, like some league where they just do all types of like other shit. It's just like we ain't really into. 
You know, I don't play that shit. And then he put, yo, I mean, you and the, he put out a record dissing Royce. His name is like Osiris something. You can re listen to it. Listen to it. Yeah, I'm going to go look it up. I'm going to go look it up. And this is this supposed to be the, the you know, the best nigga in the world right now. To Lupe. To Lupe. I can't, I can't co-sign niggas I ain't never heard, but I know Royce Penn and I know Lupe Penn. I'm just saying set the shit up. Like... Just do it. Let's go look. Shit on the look Lupe, Lupe, do it. Lupe ain't about to get in no battle. We, we probably we can do do a song. Oh, he, yo, I ain't gonna lie. He 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 said he said set it up. I'm now. Lupe ain't gonna. Besides besides the fact besides on, the fact that the bag would be tremendous, but fuck the bag. We ain't even talking about the bag. The bag would be tremendous, but just for the fact that the fans want to see that shit, set that shit the fuck up. But we need y'all to do that. I don't want you, but I I, I don't want you to change. A narrative thing here though. Like, we oh. still talking about niggas oh. rapping. Like, yeah, I don't no, want to turn into political, yo, but the bag gotta be tremendous, and then all type of shit get involved. Niggas, niggas really could just go and rap back to back like how niggas used to do. How oh, niggas move, rap move. do. Hey, Mook, 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 that's your world. I don't know nothing about you. I don't want to fuck up the political aspect because that's not my world. But what I'm telling you is as a fan of battle rap, I want to see that shit. So whatever it takes to get them niggas in the ring, set that shit the fuck up. I just think it's a great opportunity. We ain't got to get in the ring, but if we get in the ring, they better motherfucking break. They better they better back the Brinks truck up. But we ain't got to get in the ring. You know me. Hey, Royce, you know me. They got to be a bag associated you know with me. that shit. You know me. <laughs> I ain't stepping on nobody's stage. They got to be. You ain't going to make the bag, and I don't make the bag. Come on, now. <laughs> it ain't got to be there, though. It could be however. It could be, you know, yeah. it ain't got to be. It ain't, it's not quantum physics. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not really hard to come to whatever conclusion we're going to come to. However he want to do it. However he feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. However he want to, however he feel that he wants to, you know, get it off. And Lux, too. Them, them comments, niggas got me missing Harlem right now. Them huh? niggas got me missing Harlem right now, man. I wish I'm, I'm in L.A. On some, on some other shit. Them niggas got me missing Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest ain't he... Hold on, wait, wait, yeah. Come to the bit, man. This nigga Mook. Background is loud as shit, too. Hold on. Yeah, they on the street. Hold on, let me get Mickey in here. Facts. You. Facts. Guru. Guru, this is Lupe's partner in crime right here. So he's probably checking in to put you us know, in our you, place. <laughs> you already know I know Mickey. That's my brother right there. That's my brother in arms. <laughs> like, Guru, start talking spicy about my brother. I just want to let y'all know he made mural, nigga. Mural. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, my nigga? Chilling, chilling. I, 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 so, what, Mickey, what we doing? What we doing? Can we set this up? Can we Can we get this Mickey, all the way? What's your opinion on this? Mickey, Mook no, call, dude. Mickey, Mook no. Call, Luke, Luke taking call me. All right. Mook, Hey, hey, Royce, Moot called me and said, pick a side. Huh? <laughs> he called me. <laughs> that nigga Lou taking him for a ride, ain't he? Yeah, I mean, you know, Lupe said he would pop in. You know what I mean? But he he want to he, he, he see what, what everybody talking about. You know what I'm saying? No, it, it's simple. We want to see these two niggas. We want to see what everybody's stage. talking about. It he know what everybody's talking about. What do you want to get to write? A, a book report? Nah, I spoke to Lupe about battling Royce already. He already told yeah. me, he already told me his number and everything. That nigga told me he not the slightest bit interested in stepping on that stage. Uh, I mean, he he told me something different. All right, well, shit, Lupe got to make his fucking mind up, man. I, I got you know, I got children, man. You know what I mean? Like I got you know, I got to, <laughs> I got people to I got people to put in bed and fucking you know, I ain't got time to be sitting around waiting on this nigga to fucking. Come around, change his mind, make his mind up. <laughs> I think it'll be dope for the culture, but you know, again, it's it's one of those situations where he gotta, you know, he gotta he gotta know what's going on. You know? There he is, hold on. Come on, it's hip hop. This hip hop. Lou in, bring Lou in. Bring Lou in. Oh, they well, where's he at? Bring him in. <laughs> I'm trying to find him. <laughs> My brother, man. Where you at, Lou? Where you at, Lou? Hold on. So he can come in here and put. 
do more talking than rapping. Listen, man. I'm Here we go. To put, put a shirt, shirt on. on. Put a shirt on. Put a shirt on first. That's next to put a shirt on. Why in the shirt on? I put on shit. Why the The niggas Lou. keep bringing this up. Lou, put a Lou. shirt on, bro. You you ain't got no damn hair on your chest, bro. Then I'll tell you. I'm not, I'm not putting on shit. Okay, this is all I need to know, Lupe. This is all I need to know. You, Royce, URL, what's up? I don't fuck with URL like that. I don't. Okay, you, you, oh, Lou, wait, Royce. Wait, 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 Google. Wait. I don't want to do URL. Okay. Beasley, other listen. Other leagues. I was going to bring up the other leagues. Beasley, for some reason, feels that I have, like, a bone to pick with URL. Right? So he keep back door and throwing numbers and, and he'll throw shit to Mickey. And I'm like, look, man, I'm not really interested in the URL shit. I'm not really interested in battling Royce. Right? But don't get it fucked up. That don't mean I won't cook niggas if niggas keep pushing buttons. I ain't, I ain't pushing. We, I ain't pushing your buttons. We pushing the buttons. If you them, Lux and them caught. Lux and them caught you. I don't want to do that shit personally. But if you want to make a professional fool of your motherfucking self, running up against a demon, go ahead. Fuck who you. Who you? Who you talking to, man? Ain't rap yet. Lou, Y'all ain't rap yet. None Lou, of these listen, niggas Lou, rap. Lou, listen, 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 listen. Before you say something stupid, Mook and them called you. Say something I, I, I ain't bringing no, this Lux up. Mook and, them, Mook and them called you. Look, Lux called me. Not what the Mook. fuck you think? I'm lying to you? What the fuck I got to lie for, dog? Nigga, Lux just called me. Well, get in the motherfucking ring then, bitch. If you got a motherfucking problem, who you think you fucking talking to, nigga? All right, nigga. You playing too much. <laughs> okay, okay, start Take practicing. Take some of that motherfucking bass start, out your voice, start, nigga. Start, start practicing, nigga. It ain't, start, nothing, to pra it ain't nothing to practice start, about. Start, yeah, nigga, start practicing. Fuck what you talking about. It ain't nothing to practice about. If you can't rap unless you get personal. <laughs> Did he hang up? He hung up. Oh. <laughs> he ain't gonna fucking feel the way toward me like I'm the one who I ain't fucking bring it up, nigga. They brought it up to you. I right. brought it up. I brought it up. 30 days from now, what's up? If he don't want to do it on URL, it's other leagues we could do it in. What's going on? It's a lot of other leagues giving out this bag. What's up? Why y'all made my man hang up like that for, man? Because I'm straight to the point. Lou and his motherfucking sensitive, fake, tough ass shit. I'm gonna see. We gonna see each other in person, <laughs> so we can, so we can really, so we can really talk, and we can really both live in the center of our truth. You know what I mean? Listen, I'm tired of niggas acting like motherfucking pseudo tough niggas. Hey, we just want to oh, motherfuckers don't fucking talk to me like that, nigga. I'll break oh, fucking neck. Put they flowers. That's what we here to do. I ain't nah. never hear nothing but giving bitch asses flowers. <laughs> Come in yelling at me. What the fuck? Yo, Lux wanna come back up. Lux wanna come back up. Shout out Lloyd Banks in the building too. You say Lux, where you at? I just want to see the fight. That's the whole point. I just want to see the fight. Lux. Hold on. Wait, wait. Guru, Guru, I saw some of y'all conversation about the best. I just want to let you know I don't I don't aim to be the best. I just want to put out great music. That's it. I think you should aim to be the best. Nope. But it's too subjective, B. There's too many nice guys. Everybody's everybody's nice, man. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know what, I'm gonna just make the best music that I can make for my And that's what it is. Got it. Hold on, I can't find Lux. You said Lux, you said Lux right? Yeah, yeah, Lux. Plus, Hove's still alive. Hove's oh, there you go, there you go. Hold on. Still out here breathing. Y'all know, know Lux and Mook, they're going to come in here screaming. Huh? Huh? Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Lou don't want to do what? What do you mean? Lou don't want to do what? Hey, you, I don't know you what got you your finger over. You got your finger over the speaker, bro. Oh, I told you. I said, Lou don't want to do what? I don't know what he said. Man, he said, start writing. And what? He said, oh, what do that mean? What that mean? Everything. What you mean? Oh, he said, start practicing. That's no, he, he said, said start writing. He told a nigga to start practicing. Niggas don't say shit like he that. He didn't say practice. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 
Anyway, listen. You listen. Just use the word practice. No, no, listen, man. Yeah. Listen. It's Sean. Come on, take the spot your side here, Oh, yeah, so take this shit off, man. You want to get a call? Huh? No, nah, I was saying, yeah. Name, yeah. Yo, I know what? Hold on. What's going? On? Yeah, we good. We good. Hey man, that that, that, that sound what that sound like to me? I mean, to y'all like I I already love Boy, I love, I love the, you know the tension and all that. That makes for good fights. He I said he's like ready for war, back. Lux. He said he's ready for war. Yeah, that's he said that he ready sound for like. War, Lux. That sound, that sound <laughs> healthy. Yeah, no, he said he said no start practicing. He said start writing. He said start practicing. Did he say start Yo, practicing hey, or start hey, writing? Hey, hey, no, 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 Lux, Lux. I hear but you got you to gotta notice my man demeanor. It's like when a nigga pull out a gun and a nigga look at him like, use it, nigga. Use it. You ain't scared me with that little gun. Use it. That's what Roy Space said. Roy Space said, nigga, use the gun, nigga, use it. And then it looked like, <laughs> I hear you. And then it looked like Moose said, ain't nothing to talk about. He right. got that thing right. going, got a body there. All right, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I, I've been in the streets for a long time. You got that thing going, got a body I've been in the streets for a long time. Roy said, get in the ring then, bitch. And the nigga said, start practicing. He said, start writing, man. That that didn't say, all right. That's not a, that, did he, on, did he agree? Right, right, let me ask you what, Royce, no? Yeah. Is that an agreement? Yo, Royce. No, no, no. What I'm telling you is, what I'm telling you is, look at body language. So this is the nigga that's trying to, that's trying to intimidate everybody in the party, and he pull out his little gun, and the niggas that don't move, and it's like, no, nigga, right. use it. it. All I'm saying use is, was it. that an agreement? <laughs> That's all I'm asking. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't funny. That's like, let's go. He said, start writing. Bro, that did, bro, who, who, what, uh, what that mean? Ain't no time to figure The nigga said, out. start practicing. No, he said, start writing. Bro. No, he, bro, he started, started, no, 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 listen. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Move. He said, y'all do this, man. Lux and move. Y'all do this good with other niggas. This is goo y'all talking to. All that shit. The nigga started talking about prices and he don't fuck with this nigga and that nigga. Nigga, I'm talking about get in the ring. If it ain't you all around, it's other Jump battle the wings. Y'all niggas know the all ring. them niggas. Make it happen. Talking about you said that. Make it happen. Hey, yo, so I, everybody, all right, so this look, this live, this feed ain't going nowhere. Y'all can go back and look at it. My man said start writing. And all as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> we ain't got to keep talking. <laughs> Man, if he said start practicing, he said start writing, niggas, that shit sound like it's on to me. Y'all niggas, niggas been doing sound all like the Sound like it's on to me, ain't nothing to talk about. We listen, just got to figure been, out a listen, date. Lux, Lux. What venue? I, 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 y'all been, been doing all the talking, and y'all got a y'all got him misunderstanding what this is. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all got him thinking that I'm, like, uh, like uh, accosting him and, like, fucking trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like. And if it, if, it, if it get it to a point where he's speaking to me in a way where people don't speak to me, we gonna have a problem with that. He gonna have to fix his I energy. Never him, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He gonna have to fix his energy. I ain't got nothing yeah. to practice about, nigga. We could get in there whenever. You know what I'm saying? But the energy gotta be right. Ain't no nigga gonna be standing in front of me talking to me crazy without nah, me. Of course, man. You right. It gotta be respectful. It gotta be straight, straight work, straight culture. Of course, we gonna go in there as gentlemen. We ain't doing that. We ain't bringing that to that. We gonna keep it wholesome and respectful. You know what I mean? I ain't, yell, I, ain't yell, I, ain't yell, I ain't yelled at none of my friends in a long time. And you, this nigga, when I this nigga, this nigga come, Lupe, this you, nigga when Lupe, when I started yelling, was, some bombs come yo, behind. Yo, I heard nigga Lupe RJ just Payne say he was better than Lux. I heard RJ Payne say he was better than you on the beat. Hey, Mickey, didn't you say he said that? I never said that. Some loot right now. Yeah, said Mickey that. said that. No, we keeping this everybody. Right, everybody get it, but we they say you get over because I'm talking about all smoke. All right, you keep one. I want all smoke. What are you talking about? Well, right now we hey, talking RJ, about Hey, RJ. RJ. We talking about voice. RJ said. Well, but RJ, how, how, how we going to? RJ said, said if y'all get on. How we going to loop y'all niggas? Huh? How we gonna loop y'all niggas in? Cause Lupe already he already said. Talk about him. Let him get ready. How we gonna loop y'all in? Who? Uh, me. Yeah, nigga, we got three of the best. We got three of the best right there. How y'all pin gonna get it? Yeah, we here. You know, you know. We got three. We got three of the best right there. Yeah. What did he say? Goo said we got three of the best right here. But no, he said, how did we do? Mount Rushmore. Hey, yo, we 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 trying to figure. Uh, Royce said, how we gonna get looped in though? 
I into into the, on the card on that same card. What we talking about? It ain't gonna be no card. I mean, whatever it is, I don't give a fuck. With, if we rapping, we had a. I'm here to rap, man. I'm here to. I'm here to rap. We had a rap. I mean, hello. We had a rap, man. This, this, we I do, we come up like this, man. So what up? You know, you pick a name out of hat, as far as I'm concerned. What fuck we doing? Uh, <laughs> Oh, you know, I, that's what we, uh, you know what I mean? But as far as, you know, I, I, I'm excited about Royce and Lou because I, we always that's, believed that's in... Renegade? Hold on. That's, 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 that's Nick. That's, that's, that's Renegade? Nah, that's Renegade. <laughs> yeah. A lot of niggas don't know Mickey Fax first that rap. He bad rap was Renegade. Yeah. We was out there then. Yeah. 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 Lupe said rap shit. Lupe said oh, rap thing. He back in here. <laughs> oh, he want to freestyle Yo, right beat. now. Okay. Y'all see them comments? Hey, look, that's what it's about. Let's go, go. It comes down to this, y'all. The world about to be, ain't no standing behind no status. Ain't no standing behind nothing. If you rap and you outside, you outside. You no ducking. That's it. No, no ducking. No ducking. Niggas talking, you got to dance, puppy. Uh, you got to dance, puppy. <laughs> and and, and I'm going to say I'm gonna say it like this with all, with all respect. With all respect, hey, I'm willing to put the money on Royce. Man, man. I'm you got to your put money, the on, Royce, money on Royce, too? You got your money on Royce? I got my money on Royce. I'm putting the real money on Royce. Look, look. He said look, you put look, your money on No, no. What I want you to do, what I want you to do is look to your right. Your man, your man oh, always say this to everybody. Don't put some other nigga money up. Put your money up. <laughs> I, I, I my money up. I ain't mad at that. I what's your man, what's your man to the right say? Don't put another nigga money up. Put your money up, nigga. Right, right. I ain't mad at that. I got my money on Royce, too. Hey, yo, look. I got my money on Lou. I'm, hey, straight up no chase. Let's so do it. Like, what we gonna bad. do? Gentlemen's bad. I got it. I got what my we money gonna on do? Lou. I got my money on Lou. I got my money on Lou. Hey, look, listen. Hey, look, I'm gonna say this. It's, in, it's it's out there. This shit is out there. The fans know. We know. We all gonna try to make it happen. Let's build the gonna, And he gonna pull out. And he gonna pull out. What? So I'm, do, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say nothing else. He's gonna type, he gonna when, type some lyrics in the comment section and he's gonna fucking say it. When this happened, when this happened, when this happened oh, I got a light 10 on Royce. I got a light 10. You got a light 10 on Royce. I don't wanna match that 10. I ain't talking big boy numbers. It's just a gentleman's bet. I got a light 10,000 on, on Royce. Royce. What's up? Right, all right, all right. I got a light, right. light bet. Gentleman's bet. It ain't gonna hurt nobody's pockets. A light 10,000. I said, I'll take that bet. <laughs> yeah, Life. I'm going with Lou. We gotta, we gotta, yo. I just hope, I just hope it don't get lost in the politics, bro. I just hope. No, that that's what this is about. Hold, not to cut your wisdom, bro. That, listen, that, that's what this is about. Ain't no standing behind status. Ain't none of that. We figure it out on mutual grounds where everybody is happy and we, we really do this shit, man. No, listen, really listen, come to rest, listen, man. listen. This is goo talking. So for once in the in the whole shit. Y'all niggas run that shit. Y'all niggas determine what it is. Y'all the veterans of this rap world. Y'all say what the rules are supposed to be and where we supposed to meet and how we supposed to do it. Y'all determine that shit. Take the destiny and battle rap for y'all. But for one who pays on the law, say with some politics shit. As far as I'm concerned, I feel like we have to place with respect. Lupe started the law. Tell him. We can get out of here so he can come up. I feel like we had a place where some perspective need to be. What'd you say, Royce? I said, I feel like we hey, had Mickey, a Hey, who you betting on? Hold on, hold on. I want to hear what Royce said. I want to hear what Royce said. What'd you say, Royce? I said, regardless of whatever, I feel like we had a space where perspective need to be had. So I'm going to rap regardless. Mm. It's, it's going to happen. So Lupe can talk all yeah, that fly shit. Talk. It's coming. So keep, right, on, so keep, on, so keep on talking. You're going to get what you asked for. Yo, Just Mickey, remember, who, you who, who do you it. got, Mickey? Who I you remember, remember, you said, said it, on not me. On Luke. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo, Mickey. <laughs> I don't, always hype. Nobody, I don't want nobody to hide. Mickey is my brother. Mickey, live on live and direct right now. Who you got? I got Lou. I got Lou. I got 10 on Lou. Mm. You got 10 on Lou. I got 10 on Lou. To me, with me. I guess what? Uh, who, with whoever. With whoever. That yo, that's that's a bet. That's a that's, bet. Now listen, please, I'm saying the politics. I just need this to get done. I don't want. I don't want this this fire energy for the culture to go and you know what I mean niggas high you know how the battle it could just go, but we got to get this thing done, man. I fly, I fly, I fly, niggas to Detroit. How many niggas is it? I fly, <laughs> niggas here. Royce is on it. Hey, I, hold on. I put I put all you niggas on the plane. <laughs> Royce is on it.
Everybody Yo, betting, everybody betting against me. Pull a beat up, and I drag all you niggas okay. to the deep waters. <laughs> I don't even understand why this is even a conversation. I yeah, you. I mean, I mean, wait. So, Royce, are you saying, are you saying, like, you know, bring bring everybody and and niggas niggas do like one big cipher and see who you know who dies? I'm saying let's yeah, I'm saying let's figure it out. What is, what is it? What we do? Oh, I'm let's with figure that. It out. I'm, I'm open. I'm open. I'm open to suggestions. I'm with that on 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 top of the pause. Do you and Lupe situation? I'm I'm with that. No, nah, the, the the me and Lupe the me and Lupe shit is now the caveat. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I think it all stems. They from said that. Lupe rapping. They said Lupe rapping on his lives. <laughs> I gotta leave him alone. <laughs> Listen, listen, that shit, that <laughs> shit, that shit ain't nut. That shit ain't nut. But hot air. Listen, this is how he always gets out of this, bro. Manolo, that's why, bro. That's why I don't understand what he be getting mad about. It's like, nigga, you're not gonna rap. You just gonna go on your live, do some freestyles. freestyles. Your fans gonna tell you that the shit is dope. And then when we shoot the podcast, you're gonna be acting nah. funny because you're gonna be thinking I said something about you. It's like bro, weirdo all shit. I'm saying is, is I'm just saying, bro, nigga not better than a nigga. That don't mean I hate you. That you know, just show me. Period. Yeah, he That's what we all. He, he ain't spitting written. He just freestyling up there. Yo, so who else That's is going? Gonna do? Good written, huh? <laughs> Yo, who who going to Detroit? Uh, that's what I want to know. I tell you who ain't coming. Lupe Fiasco. He gonna sit his ass right there with that shirt off and rap to his camera <laughs> and act like a tough guy. Yo, we gotta, that, RJ, we gotta get RJ. That, we gotta get RJ. We gotta get unnecessary. We gotta get everybody like, man, that they said. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Whatever it is, let's get it done. I love energy. You know, it's incredible. And this is beautiful. I almost got hit by a car for this shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm on the call, Lieutenant. Nigga said Lupe up there, like nah, yeah, yeah, he on there. I'm live. He freestyling. Live. They said. Yeah, you know. But they they, they said Lupe up there sounded like. The one, the two, the hip hop, the hop, the hip hop, <laughs> pop, the boat. Yo, yo, chill out, man. Let chill me out, stop man. fucking with Lupe, man. Nah, 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 nah. Let me stop fucking with Lupe. He gonna get your ass cool. He still can't fuck. He can't fuck with Royce. You know that nigga, you know that nigga Lou. You know Lou shoots stray bullets, nigga. Nigga said he rapping the Casper. Now they, hold on here. I just had a wonderful. Yo, listen, man. Listen, I ain't gonna have my man like that. Look, this is what I know. Royce, you know I got love for you. Make us good, you know I got love for you. We, you already know we gonna keep it tall. We gonna keep it respectful. I'm a, I'm a, I just wanna be, how would you wanna say, an advocate for this, man. Like I really wanna, yes. I wanna see y'all do it respectfully. Nah, I don't know why you doing that, bro. Look at all that. Lupe looking yeah. like Steph on Yeah, yeah look at that. Yo, listen, respectfully, man. I just, yo, you know what I mean. I wanna see yo, the brothers yo, come Royce, together and get it done. Lupe up there looking like Steph on Marbury when he put the Vaseline on. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, leave my man alone. Stop Let's roll this thing. Yo, now nah, that shit gonna be dope for the culture, though, man. Like, word. That's all, man. No standing behind your status. Like, niggas come to rap. Niggas come to rap. Worse, that's what you do. Lou, do that shit too, man. We about to open the floodgates, man. I just think it's that time. Respectfully, you you already know how I feel about your penmanship, Royce. You ain't nothing to be, you know what I mean, played with. You know what I no, mean? Royce is dope. No, Royce no, is dead no, nice. No, but Lou, dead nice too. So what the fuck? Yeah, but Royce is. Voice is under. You can't do that. Voice is under. 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 Voice is in Manhattan Avenue. Nobody ever knew it was Royce the 5'9". He used to have a do-rag Royce. Did I tell you the story ever? I yeah. never heard the story. Yo, he used to have a do-rag. He used to have it tied up in the jet. He used to be walking through the block. And we was like, who the fuck is this nigga with this do-rag shit tied up every time walking through the block? Damn. And he used to live over my fucking block. All nigga says, uh, Royce walking through just Dolly, walking back and forth. Real shit, come to find out it was Royce the Five Nine. Wow. The whole time. The whole time. Six degrees of separation for real. Royce walked through the jungle dolo. Royce, you was in the Mecca, Royce? He walked through the jungle dolo every day. 
Yo, that's crazy. No, I'm not lying. Every day you walk dole up through the block. Yo, uh, yo, when it's lit. Hey, yo, Royce. I yeah. hope I hope Lupe saved that. Like, All the nah. time I seen Royce, I seen Royce in the town. One time, but that was that was recent. That was that was like a couple years ago, right, Royce? When yeah, when I think at that at that restaurant. Yeah, yeah, that was an African joint. Yo, I'm excited, the- y'all. Listen, I, I just want to say this. You know what I'm saying? Everything and everything that's going on in this vibe right now. I'm so excited. This shit feel like. This shit feel like nine, nine, nine. Be all over. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas put the y'all put the wrong battery in his back. Y'all got the nigga upset. <laughs> now yo, but Royce, if we your work, they work, they if we not you, bro, if we not challenging each other, what we doing, bro? If we if we if still ain't sharpening the steel, what we doing? Like the fact that bring bring water. That nigga came up high, high on his life. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check out Lupe for this shit. I'm, I want to see what Lupe is talking about. All right, he, 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 he's over there talking about. He already talking about um, wild 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 Yo, I just spoke to Royce, so I know his own in. He, he's he's ready. ready somewhere else with it. My money on Royce. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I'm just going with Lou, man. I, I, I believe in Lou, Lou Pimmership. That's, that's what it is. I have the domain name. Yo, Royce. I'm about to work on the website. We about to get about it. At least I'm about to get out of here. Yo, yo, yo. I'm going to hit your jack, Brody. I'm okay, my nigga. Jack, Royce. I don't know why they, right. I don't even know why they did this. It's friendly fire, though. No, I mean, listen, listen. I ain't gonna front. When y'all get in there, y'all gonna do the damn thing. Do friendly after. Yeah, y'all can do friendly after. What you mean? You can do. I wanna see it, boy. I ain't gonna hold you. I wanna see it, kid. And I know y'all gonna come with it. And it's gonna open the industry up, man. Niggas gotta see this. Niggas better tune. In. Niggas better tune into that live, cause that's the only bars y'all gonna get. I'm telling you. Oh, say it again, bro. Y'all better tune in to Lupe Live. That's the only time y'all gonna hear him, bro. Oh, oh shit, you in the, you in the, hold up. Like, Say it one more time. Oh. oh my gosh, they're crashing. Oh, it's crashing now? It's crash. How you take this shit off? Oh, crash. oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the only time y'all gonna hear a homie rap, bro. Royce, I don't know who it looks that, That's his way of staying in the conversation. My phone died. My bad. My phone Yo, died. You, let me tell you something. You make it look like you don't got no, no face. Uh, they got Google. Oh. Google on. Yeah. So you have to say, you said only if you help. Because I, I, I'm saying I'm going to walk him down. Like to show how, how I go a little something. I'm saying help. You said you're not. I'm going to put these hands in the No, no, no. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. Lux, Lux. Yo. For the audience, right? Y'all niggas understand this, right? Y'all got a lot of fans, and the fans might not understand the whole thing. When you say help and walk them down, you talking about presentation, not right. Yeah, right. not 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 rhymes, yeah, not no, not rhymes. This is the point. Not look, rhymes look, at all. But look, yeah. let me this make this point. You can expound world. on this, Rex, Rex, and you can expound on this too, my nigga. Niggas is talking about the presentation, and that's the point I was right. making earlier about Yo, today's battle rap. Real. It's not just about your lyrics. It's about the way you present them shits. That's a fact. Showmanship, yes. That's a fact. That's my point. Yeah, but it's his showmanship against his showmanship, not against the loaded Lux Tort showmanship. Yeah, no, nah, nah, of course. That, that's Royce, Lou, and then, you know what I mean? I just wanted to give him, like, so he gonna, he gonna rap his rap. Look, Lou gonna rap his raps how he rap his raps. But, but, but at the same time, at the same time, this is theater. You know what I'm saying? And if I, if I could give him a little bit of, you know, direction in terms of how to lay out them raps so that it lands and it be impact. Yeah, that's all. I was going to tell him something. But it ain't got nothing to do with the penmanship. And when he going, you know, from his thought and put to that page, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's all. It's, it's pretty much, I'm just listening. And I'm, I'm telling you, now, with that established, I'm telling you I still got 10 on Royce. Period. I heard you. 
And I said it. I'm going with Lou. It's still I'm going with Lou. Gentlemen's, yo, my nigga, my nigga, gentlemen's bet. It don't hurt nobody pockets. A little light ten. Yeah, you gentlemen's ten. Yeah, that's gentlemen that's where I'm going with it. A little ten. Yeah, gentlemen's ten. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> now, I just want to know when we doing this shit, cause, cause now I'm that's on it. Now we, we gotta get this done. Connects. That's on y'all niggas. Y'all the niggas with the connects. We don't know them niggas. Y'all niggas know them niggas. All right, yeah, say less. Say less. I, you know, cause I don't want to jump in front of no. You know what I mean? But. I'm definitely advocating for it. Like I, I no, said no, earlier, no, no, no. I'm again, advocating for this Lux, voice. Lupe. Lux, Lux, this is me talking. So again, I you, can't, you can't talk for Lupe Pockets. You can't talk for Royce Pockets. But what I'm saying is you can advocate for it so that the right amount of shit come about so we can see this. I'm not saying you talk for Pockets like you they manager. I'm not. The world need to know what the real is. You got connected right. to them niggas. We, we as fans, as battle rap fans, who love y'all niggas want to see that shit. Make it happen. Say less. That's all. Say less. We on it. We That's on all. it. Say less. Hey, hey, yo, pleasure talking to y'all fellas. We gotta get over. Salute. Yo, love, I'm gonna hit your jack. Yo, always the honor. Hey, hey, dude, did Chris send you that? Nah. Dude, nah. did Chris send you that? Nah, send it to me. Send it to me. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, nah, he ain't send it to me. Yo, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. I call, yo, yo. All right, all right, all right. I'm going I'm to have you send it to you. I'm going to send it to you. All right, cool. Okay, back. All right. All right, all right, move. All right, fellas, yo. Bless talk. Food. Salute. Salute, King. Royce, you already know. Top of the tower. Love y'all. Y'all niggas are y'all niggas done, fucking yeah? troublemakers, man. Y'all like two little kids. <laughs> you know hey, yo, Royce, I love you, bro. I'm about to get to work. <laughs>